I'm Yuri, I'm Jacob, and we're going for a drive. Today we have Yuri and Jacob of the Straight Pipes YouTube channel. The Straight Pipes is arguably Canada's top car review YouTube channels. They're super hardworking and just great guys with a ton of insight. We talk electric cars, how to make a living on YouTube, grassroots racing, F1, and drifting. Before the episode, please subscribe and rate the podcast. The more that this thing grows, the more likely I am to get Lance Stroll and Latifi on for a year in review. Yeah, so I guess we started car reviewing at like 27, 28-ish. Yeah. So, and then like, I had no credentials besides like, I mean, I could drive a lot and I like to drive. And then uh, same with Jake, like we did track stuff, but we weren't like, oh, you're such a good driver. We've mm. got to put you on camera. So like, I think our credentials, our uh, skill just came from driving so many cars like over time. And even still like, I kind of still feel like imposter syndrome. Mm. Just for, for, sure. for the driving, like certainly not for the reviewing. Yeah, well, I mean, even a little even bit here the and there. Reviewing. You're like, should I be reviewing this Rolls Royce or something? Like, who am I to talk about this? But then you realize like, yeah, we've reviewed like 500 cars, so we have like a different outlook. But, and then, yeah, but with driving, it's just like more track days, more time. Yeah. And now, now I feel like pretty confident, but I definitely know I'm not like... I'm not confident to take out a classic car on track and like just do crazy stuff. Sure. I'm pretty confident in that at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like I used to do personal uh, car track days and stuff like that, but I didn't do anything like crazy. I didn't do any racing and I didn't do any like drifting, but like I took my first car to the drag strip like all the time. Right. That was a Ford Escort doing 17, 18 second yeah. qu uh, yeah, quarter I miles. That. Yeah, I was racing like Jettas and stuff. I would literally, I at one point I came back, took out my back seats, took out my spare tire, took out my center console, took out my passenger seat, took out my door panels and I ran like a 69. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that <laughs> weight is worth yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, so I was like, I was about it. But um, yeah, no, I'm pretty comfortable with everything. Well, like, ever get but like, would you take that F40 on a track and do a review or would you be like, well, you'd be very hesitant about it? It'd be no, like- No, I would, on the street, I would be very hesitant. On the track, I feel like I'm okay because there's no other people to do something to me. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm just worried about old cars, like, because you guys have so many old cars and, like, um, well, like double clutching and stuff on certain cars to get things to. Well, no, I don't know. No, no cars. Well, that's, the, a, that's a fallacy. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> that's so, Fast and the Furious, well, man. No, I mean, <laughs> the, for old cars, though. The to one like car. Match okay, some really old cars. The, the yeah, Porsche that we like drove 70s in Germany. cars and stuff. We drove a 70s Porsche, whatever, uh, the mid-engine one in okay. Germany. Yeah. Straight off the museum floor. And, and it was a dog leg, like, four-speed or three-speed. With or no something. synchros. Yeah. Yeah, okay. with yeah. no synchros. That's yeah. what I, it just, yeah. things are so weird. And I'm like, what? I'm like, am I hurting the car? Like, no one explained this to me. Like, I didn't grow up in, like, the same. Driving a tractor. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. I could have used the lesson. Like that's the kind of stuff of like scared to like beat on a car. I'm like, does it have something to stop me from accidentally going into first? Like nobody told me anything. Yeah. Like well, we drove the um, what's his name, Castro NASCAR guy that you race against. Oh yeah, DJ Kennington. DJ. We drove yeah. his car. He's like, it's straight cut gears. You don't need to use the clutch. He's like, don't put it in first. I'm like, I'm gonna keep it in fourth once I get up to speed. <laughs> first, second, first. Yeah, you exactly. Go back to first no, gear. No, no, I know. It was like it was like up to fourth, and then cruise in in neutral and stop. Like, had, yeah, we, you guys drove that around Mostport. We had an. How out. was that? It was amazing. It was. It was. They're wild. my favorite cars. To that drive. was my favorite car ever that I've driven. Really? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it was just. It was unreal. Like the experience of it. We only had an hour with that car to. Uh, learn how to get into it, drive it, and film it. Okay, it was a nightmare. That's insane. But the best nightmare because like it was so fun. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty cool. But then also I'm like, okay, I'm learning about like race tires. It's like, do hot warmed up do these tires need to get? Like, yeah. when do they uh, let go? And I'm like, do I want to do this on a guy's car on a GP track hmm. that he said he needs to put in a trailer and drive down to Ohio once this is done in half an hour? And I'm like, it's stuff like that. Yeah, that I just hate jumping into and like giving it my all and especially with cars I don't really know. No, it's super hard to do it. Like even it's super hard to do it with someone else's car, even your own car. It's like, there's still a big consequence. Yeah. And like to find that line, like it's nerve wracking. Well, so your videos I'm always impressed with. I'm like, you can drive everything that's here. I'm like, like obviously I guess for you, it's uh, who else would I rather have driving? Like you probably feel the most comfortable, mm. but it's model T Dodge demon. It's, mm. it's cool seeing that you can drive like everything here and like you're very comfortable with it. But I guess you were kind of raised like that, right? Yeah. Like I learned how to drive stick. I, I think I like my dad would need to like shake down a car, say, 
and would take me to hockey in like a 65 Corvette. And he would have me shift like in the, from the passenger seat. So that's kind of like how I like learned to do it. And that's cool. And like always seeing like just, yeah, how much of a bitch sometimes old cars are to get in gear or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I probably learned how to drive stick on an old car. Is there one car here that, uh, or one car that's ever been here that you just couldn't figure out how to drive or you hated driving? The clutch was messed up. Yeah, like, I don't know. All that pre-war stuff is like not that much fun for me. Like having to adjust timing and stuff and like, and just trying to like, yeah. That seems like a nightmare. No, like I like driving on the track. I don't really like the street is okay. But again, like you were saying, like I'm nervous of other people on the street. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's like the biggest thing for me. But like, yeah. for I trust me, myself. I, I tell Jacob, I have this like one fantasy where I buy a Model T okay. and I drive on like <laughs> four, 400 series highways and just inconvenience everyone on mm. like skinny wooden, like we like, I think how that's, does it end? <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully good. Like, I just want to be like, like, you know, there's like just people like trying to get to work and I'm like with no uh, real office, no job to get to just, just driving a model T bouncing around. Like, I think that would be the funniest thing. You got to film be it good from video. a helico- helicopter though. Yeah. So you can see what's behind you for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's, Dude, that's, they're that's not safe. Do. That's the other thing. Well, like, I, just I, not well safe. that's what I want to do in like rush hour. So it's like nice and slow, Queens <laughs> key or something on like the gardener. It's like, going to just overheat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's how it'll end. Well, see, I didn't know. I didn't think about that. I don't know anything about I just think it's it would be funny. It uh, would be. It would be funny. It'd be a good episode. That is my nightmare. Well, I think um, Matt Fair did that, like going down a bridge yeah, in like an old timey car. That picture is hilarious. Like I, I died when I saw that picture. Like they did this old timey thing, okay. and uh, it was exactly that. They had to go over a bridge, and it was like I think it was like two lane and bridge. It, he was holding everyone up. Yeah, and yeah, they're it was like they, San they, Francisco or something. It was just like they geez. did the whole. They dressed up in like old timey outfits. It was amazing. That's good. So you guys are. I see on your Instagram all the time. You're always complaining about charging stations. Like, are you guys driving a bunch of EV cars? Like, I want to get your take on that because it's not a part of my world. Like okay. what's going on with EV cars right now? The charge. Uh, Jacob hates talking about this. I was just. Oh, we've, we've talked about this so many times. Oh, sorry. That's, that's okay. That's, that's okay. okay. I, I just went on a uh, another clean energy show podcast by myself because Jacob doesn't want to talk about electric car charging. But I'm just so sick of them not working. The chargers, the infrastructure, how to pay and everything is just like lacking in Canada. Okay. But the car, and in the states too, unless you're Tesla, because they're the only ones who want to make money off selling electric cars, and everyone else is kind of like forced to do it for a PR stunt or whatever. Right. That's my impression of it. That's that's all it is. And like some of the things you need an app, you can't pay with like a credit card or tap. And like, it's a weird stuff. So that you have like six apps and every app has like $10 balance on it. And then everyone's got your credit card just to charge electric cars. And a lot of the chargers are always broken, but the cars are cool, but they also kind of suck. Yeah. Because, okay. So let's just talk about the cars rather than the charging stuff. Cause the charging no, stuff. No, 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 no. I want to hear okay, about fine. the charging stuff. I'll talk about well, both. Okay. So like the only difference to me is that I can't fill up my car at home, but I can charge it at home. Yes. Is that what everyone's banking on? Yes. hundred percent. Okay. So and you that's... slow charge it overnight and then you should have enough range for your normal commute. Cause not everyone's commuting like 500 kilometers a day. Right. And that's what everyone's like, I need to drive 500 kilometers. Only North Americans. But yeah. But even this drive kilometers. today, if I had the smart cabriolet for two. Or even the, the Mazda, the new EV with like low range. Coming here and back home would have been like right to the, I would have asked to charge while we do this. Okay. Because some of them are like meant for city city and this is just But outside. I would have had to have a charger here. Well, I could plug into your wall and maybe get like an extra like four oh, kilometers. Okay. Four kilometers while we're here. Unless Ten you four. have uh, a higher uh, amperage voltage system okay. in yeah. your in your place, which you probably do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's <laughs> Yeah, weird. we're welding here. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, yeah no, no, you can talk about the cars. I just wanted to get... Yeah. So, okay. So char- it's, it's charging stuff um, is hopefully going to be solved sort of in the future, but also probably not because we talked a lot about, we've talked directly to the companies yep. and they're saying like some of the stuff around us is the first generation of the chargers where they actually have like the fourth generation rolling out in some parts of the States. Of, uh, chargers? The, the chargers, 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 the okay. actual yeah. physical chargers. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's looking like it's going to be better, but the whole idea is to charge them at home and then kind of have a second car for if you want to go farther distances, so basically. How, how does that save and, the world? And then unless you live in a condo, uh, in which case exactly. condos won't let you charge and then they won't give you a spa with it. And then if you live in an apartment, then you're extra screwed. I, it's just a weird transit. It, we're just, we need to accept that we're transitioning to renewable energy for cars and stuff. Is it though? 
I think it's it's, it's part trying of it, to where it's an attack. We don't. No one knows how it's gonna work out. Yeah. But I think like Norway's like doing a good job or something. I don't know. It's because then the batteries me, just, themselves are a problem. It like, just seems like a PR stunt to me. Some it, of them. It does. Like it Tesla. seems like it's forced from the top down. It 100 is. It's only Tesla that doesn't seem like that, and right. you can tell because of the charging system. Right. It's it's I would say flawless in our testing. Fairly minimal compared to other electric cars. It's been flawless. Okay. What's going to be your first electric car for the um, for the shop for the shop? Like for inventory? Is, is like an iMev considered a classic enough yet, Ooh. or uh, you know? I don't know. What's the I'll first? Come back to you guys. Le- legendary never. electric. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's it'll, talk about it'll, the cars. Like, it'll well, happen. But the green, the green SLS. Uh, I mean, it was cool, but that was that's uh, who the, knows how that's probably the coolest first electric. So car. car wise, they all feel the same. Every electric car that we drive feels identical to the next one. Right, just because it's just like, just torque? Yeah, it's just, so, so when we're driving around, it's like you're, you turn, it understeers because it's really heavy, you floor it, it goes really quickly, you're on the brakes because it went so quickly, you turn, you're understeering again, you floor it again, and it's just, you, your neck is like, it, right. the sensation of it doesn't make any sense compared to a gas car. So and every car just, just ends up fun. feeling the same. I'm sure they could work on balance a little bit. Like they've got those some of them, like Formula the, E cars. Sure, yeah. but, I don't but know tire, are, but, tires make a big difference too. Okay. Yeah. So, but even like the Porsche Taycan handles really well. But is it that exciting to drive after you drove it like a couple times? Right. No. I, that was the one car at a track day that I it was on all seasons, not uh, summer performance. Mm. The Taycan Turbo S or Turbo the one that we drove, and I was just like. I'm just not going to, I'm going to, I'm done lapping at a Porsche day like this. Yuri and I looked at each other like, I don't actually want to do any like, more I'm, laps. I'm not having fun, so I'm just going yeah. to stop driving on a track. Is it because of the way the power curve is like delivered? A little bit. Because it's like you fly in it's hard on instant. brakes, then you kind of just, you, you you come out of corners quicker. So it's not it's like, like dirt s- bike racing. Like you just drive it in, turn it. I think so. Drive like, it right out. Yeah. But so like our lead follow car was, I don't know, a GT3 or something like that. We're on his bumper okay. on the exit. And then yeah. he has like, we have to let off. But then through the corners, we can't keep up. Right. And then we just catch him again. It's weird. Yeah. It's a totally different. Like if you're going to look at your entry apex exit speeds, mm-hmm. it's totally different than right. a gas car. Right. And then you forget how much, uh, how little brake you have because you're coming into stuff so quickly. You're like, oh my God. And you slam on it because- you don't get that sensation, so right. you end up going too fast. Yes, and you're not. Uh, you don't have the sensa- You don't have the sensation of nine thousand RPM as you enter the corner. Exactly, like yeah, you, yeah. that ear piece is missing. Yeah, like, yeah sure, yeah. they're adding this like. Woo, so it's but not, that's not for the, the same track. Thing. No, I mean like, isn't the plaid setting records? Like I'm sure. But it's, people are also crashing in it because they don't have brakes. But like, if you're talking about like the fastest car around tracks, I'm just think I think plaid has it a bunch is. of records, but it's just it's different different style. Totally yeah. different. Hmm. I, yeah. I, I think EVs are meant to be your daily commuter. So if you're going to get groceries, you're going to go to work and stuff like that. You're going to have that one car. Yeah. And I think it's kind of perfect for that. And then you have your fun gas car or your weekend car or your go to the cottage longer distance car where you don't want to deal with the charging infrastructure. I think that's the perfect solution. Right. You charge at home, go get groceries, you go home. So it's a higher income thing. 100%. Well, especially if you can't. If there's not enough public chargers for people that are working, and then you can't have it at an apartment or a condo, right? Especially in Toronto, anyone af- under a certain point is like pretty much eliminated unless they have a Tesla, because there's a lot more chargers at like malls. They'll have like 18 kiosks where okay. non-Teslas, you'll have like two. But then charging level three, like the fast charging, is expensive. It's as expensive as gas. Really? It can pretty be. Much. It can be. Yeah, because you're paying like 20 bucks. Uh, an hour. You, you, you get charged by the hour here instead of by the amount of power you use. What? But the states, yeah. the states and other, I think provinces, maybe they charge. No, uh, it's a federal government thing. Yeah, I looked into this. In Canada or the states? Canada. Okay. So it's actually in certain states as well. Okay. So it's a it's a measurements Canada thing. It's like an old thing that they need to change, and they're actually updating it. So it will be measured by the kilowatt soon. Right. But right now it's by the hour. Jesus. Yeah. Because the cars charge at a certain uh, certain speed at diff- 80 to 100 is a lot slower than uh, 10 to 80. But then... Percentage. Yeah, yeah percentage. Yeah, 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 so yeah. then you can set your cars usually to charge from... You stop at 80% and then the machine will stop charging you. Okay. But then if you're parked there too long, then you get charged an idle fee for taking up a spot. Oh my goodness. Which makes sense because... <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It just seems like a whole mess. Like, it just seems like no it one's is. ready for this. Well, and Yuri and I keep saying, it's like, well, if you threw one of our parents into this, you're like, they, they'd, be, they'd yeah. be, what is this? Like, I, this is this is a nightmare. What? 
like what if they don't have an iPhone? I don't know. It's like and there's no attendance. Oh, you're there. not even allowed in society if you don't have an iPhone now or and then, a smartphone. And then on yeah. top of that, um, <laughs> oh, I lost my. Oh, the the interiors. They're like because this is an electric car. We need to get rid of hard buttons. We just need you to talk to this car, and we're oh gonna shine goodness. lights at you. <laughs> Every car is like this. What? Yeah, no, they're all like, and it's like, okay. Like this, just it's just adding more and more stuff. Cause I'm I'm a fan of hard buttons, like you know whatever. Yeah. I know how a touchscreen works. When you start talking <laughs> to a car, and then like I have to use a a temperature slider. Oh, it's like those are the worst. They're all like that now. the The best car recently that we drove electric was the BMW i4 because it gets criticized for being a gas car that was turned into an EV, which okay. actually for us makes it kind of perfect because they left a lot of the hard buttons. They did delete some they, of them. They deleted a few too many, But my favorite ones. It's mm. st it's still, it feels like you're driving a gas car that happens to be electric. Right. And it's like the best compliment I can give it. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Whereas the iX was like ground up electric and that to me is like a nightmare car. Yeah, they get rid of the um, where the transmission tunnel would be. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, cool. And they're like, there's more room. It's like I didn't ask for more room. Like you put your groceries there or a bag there. You take a, a right turn, and all of a sudden you got stuff sliding to your feet, and you're like, you got an apple under your brake. Just like, <laughs> like you, you, the car is fine. Like I don't mind the way it is. I don't right. know. All right, so the jury's out on that. Uh, you guys have probably said this a million times, but not for my listeners. Can I can I get the story? I know of the straight pipes. I know you started the channel, Jacob, and you were just filming and it actually gave my dad a good idea when we were chatting about it. He's like, why don't we just do exhaust noises or something? I'm like, <laughs> he's like, that would be easy to do. <laughs> I don't think that's what they want from us, but that's how the channel started. That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. So I started the channel myself and the whole reason was like, I was shopping for exhausts for my Subaru and I'm on YouTube. YouTube was new. What year is this? Oh, uh, uh, 2013 is when you started it, but I don't know if... No, wasn't it? It was 2012. 2012 is when I started it. When did YouTube start? Like, 09, 08? 07. Okay. Yeah, and I had my first personal channel a year later, or the same year that it started. So, so you guys were freaking early, or you yeah. were, I'm well, sure, Well, I mean, your, well. your Google account was, like, automatically No, no, YouTube I was account. uploading. Like, there, I have evidence of old uploads where I was, like, doing dumb stuff, but nice. it was with cars and stuff. So, yeah. And then, like, I, like, I would film... I uploads from, like, 2008 on mine, and it's just like, it's like, oh, I want to share this video with someone. It's like, YouTube's free, and Vimeo costs money, so I'll just... Yeah. True, I guess, snowboard videos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so 2012 is when I did, like, I wanted to do exhaust videos for okay. my 2004 WRX. Uh, because I couldn't find anything. I was like shopping for exhaust. Everything had wind noise, people laughing, filmed at night, filmed in portrait mode, mm -hmm. just garbage videos that you can't see what or hear what the actual exhaust sounds like. So my intention was to just make high quality exhaust videos that people can listen to what that car sounds like with this exhaust, with that exhaust, stock, that. That was the whole premise. Okay. And then how did you come in? Well, you remember we were, uh, I was filming Motoring TV back when you did that uh, Tesla versus... That was, um, dude, that's still like one of the only electric cars I ever drove. Yeah, Tesla versus Challenger with <laughs> oh, so Russ. You, your, your electric car uh, benchmark is like really high. The Model S. Yeah. yeah, it was the Model S uh, rear-wheel drive where you couldn't turn off traction. But I think you yeah. still managed to do burnouts or a donut because like they didn't like... Yeah. It was they the older sure, ones. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. But uh, and then Russ, so, yeah, Russ you're the, filming from motoring TV. Yeah, and then yeah. Russ had the gimmick with you where he's like, oh, young punk. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I was supposed to be the EV car guy. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're, at the you're time. young, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're drag racing at like Woodbine parking lot or something. But um, yeah, I just filmed for motoring TV while I was doing film industry stuff too. And and then it was like, how do you get cars? And I, I managed to bo bother Graham Fletcher enough until he revealed too many of his secrets. Mm. I'm like, Jacob. We can get cars. Here's the secret. And so well, you guys were already buddies. We've been buddies oh, yeah. since high okay. school, since okay, okay. Uh, so, 2000. When I was filming, so you were in touch with him about his channel? Well, so I, just, you well, were, I guess I, I was, uh, I was, when I was filming the exhaust videos, I'm like, well, how do I add more quality to this and stuff? And he was doing the drone stuff. Oh, so I'm like, okay. hey, Yuri, can you help me film whatever car? Yeah. And then I think it was actually a Ford uh, Focus that I got from a dealership. And I was like, holy crap, they gave me this car for a day. I'm like, Yuri, we have this Focus ST let's let's film it really well yeah. so we did and then i wanted to i would do what i was doing at motoring because i would be like i'll show these older guys who's boss me and my buddy jacob we're gonna film stuff better than i do for tv and then right because like, we had no limits you had no boss and we're like well, what do we what do you want to do yeah and then it's like if i can film tv quality stuff for these guys why can't i film tv quality stuff for us right and uh yeah and it yeah worked, so basically worked out. I, <laughs> so I asked you did to, that ford was it, what was it focus uh, yeah. Focus ST is the first one I, I remember. Just for fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything and, was, but for your channel. Yes. Everything okay. was for fun yeah. until... Uh, but this was like my escape from work to hopefully, because I had an office job, to yeah. like hopefully do something that I can leave that office job. So you had a, a kernel of aspiration to do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. I didn't ever actually expect it to really be able to be my primary thing. Yep. But if it made enough on the side and I was happy, then I would be good. So you were more of a YouTube guy than Yuri? Uh, I guess initially? so. I think because yeah. he was getting, he was going viral with his videos. Of I was. Car exhaust. Oh, okay. exhaust so videos. you had success. Yeah. yeah, I did. And was it, were my, you able to monetize it like yep. off YouTube at that time? Yeah. I definitely made like a dollar or two. Nice. From like 50,000 views or something nice. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So but I was, it was like, like, oh wow, there's potential here. Getting, 50, <laughs> getting the comments and getting the views early on. Like I remember it was like, whoa, people are stoked on this. Like you're doing something right. And then. I think I got some some views with uh, when I was doing drones. Like I did some tutorials on how to balance your propellers, balance your motors, and like how to set up a gimbal. Okay. And like one video ended up getting like eighty thousand views with the gimbal. People were like, "You saved me." I uh, I have a job the next day and I couldn't figure it out because it was like one of the weird technologies that was like really fresh before everything was like nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I got like a lot of good comments on that. So it was just like that YouTube bug where people are like. Hey, you're good. And you're like, I should do yeah, more videos. Yeah, I am good. Yeah, you did. I remember you did a drone video of High Park, and I think oh, I, yeah. I helped you with something on that video. Either it was the title or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a uh, drones in High Park, and uh, and it went viral. It went, well, like, yeah, I think I like fifty or maybe a hundred thousand views. Like, well, blog Tio shared it mm-hmm. back then. This is yeah, back then. Totally, yeah. yeah. So, when do, when were you like? We should do this. We should quit our jobs. Why would we do anything else? I have an exact answer. Uh, so the AMG Performance Tour. We so we we had been reviewing cars for uh, about a year at that point, right? Year steady. Yeah, of doing it on the side and like just trying to working our way up from Honda Civics and Hyundai Velocity. Like one one a week, one a month. Yeah, oh, like one a week. One, one a okay. week. Yeah. Um, and I got to the point that I used so much vacation time at my work mm. that because we were getting we were getting invited to trips. What like, were you doing? Uh, for work. I was, I worked at an environmental company, okay. like my background, I have a uh, bachelor of science from uh, university of Toronto in you're doing like <laughs> geotechnical reports and stuff. Uh, I was working with those people and okay. like engineers and stuff. It's kind of complicated. Anyways. I was, I was doing water quality stuff. Okay. Um, but anyways, uh, so I, we kept getting invited to, to these events. Like we were at the launch of the civic type R we're like, holy crap, we got invited to this. Okay. Do they know? Like. Anyways, that's a funny story, which we could talk about after. But um, yeah, so we got kept getting invited to these uh, events, and eventually we got invited to the AMG Performance Tour. I'm like, I don't have any more And they were going to have a GTR there. Mm. And we're mm. like, uh, they're going to fly us out to Vancouver. Let us drive every single new AMG. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. I just, Quit. yeah. I was like, you I don't have- You put in a year leave as a backup. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. Uh, what, uh, it was a year leave, un- well, obviously unpaid. But yeah. I'm like, I- uh, in my head, I was I was done. Okay, but I just needed that fallback also in my head. So you're gonna give it a year. Yep. To see if it was financially feasible. Exactly. Because it was like, it everything seemed to line up. You're like, we should go for this. Yeah. And at that point, the amount of money that we were making, we argued over whether we should spend it on a laptop. That's how much yeah, money like we made. So how much money were you making? Like four thousand dollars, maybe. Like a year. A month. Like no, no. no. At that point, that's like what we made. It was like five thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. It was like it was like really. Yeah. It was really nothing. What year was this? Uh, twenty eighteen, twenty seventeen. If you type in, if you type in AMG uh, performance tour on our on our YouTube channel, you'll find the exact date that the video went up. We may have given it a weird title. It might be kind of hard to find. Performance tour. tour uh, the straight pipes. Twenty seventeen, October twenty five, twenty seventeen. That was it. We I don't making, know if you, we were don't making you want to play the audio through there if it's coming through or not, but we were making laptop money. Probably got music. Uh, we don't, we don't need for. to watch it. Oh, yeah. this is your first video. No, no, this is the like. Okay, this is the this is the point in time where you're like, yeah, we're doing quit. It. Okay, uh, just don't. I don't know if the music's coming through because it might be like. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was the that was the day that Jacob's like. I oh, need all to go of the move. track. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yep, bunch of cool. Oh, look at that! No beard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, we couldn't believe they were letting us do we, this. We can tell you the story of the beard later too. Nobody really knows the full story. The beard's a funny one Oh yeah, one too. give me all the juicy stuff that oh, all, sure. your, all your new crazy fans want to hear. Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So that was the point in time when you guys are like, we're doing it. We're, well, yeah. that was I when had he to. fully you committed because of work, and then I was working film industry, so it was freelance stuff, and like so I just always yeah, I'm like I'm like this, like this is just another job, like, <laughs> exactly, whatever, and then. I think later in the spring, like I brought Jacob on to like two jobs to like drone camera operate with me just for fun. I'm like, yo, it'll be funny. I'm like, say this, the, the you won't get in trouble. Like everything will be fine. Cause Jacob has, was pretty good at the camera operating. Yeah. And, um, that's good, Mitch. I think we're done watching that. And then, uh, I just, uh, one day I'm like, you know what? 
like I'll fully commit to like I think one person noticed me on set while I was camera operating somebody was like you're from the straight pipes right I'm like I should probably just quit this and just do a straight pipe so I'm like in solidarity I stopped doing film jobs okay just for fun like I'm like what did you guys make that first year oh like like the first year that we quit yeah like when you were like uh, we got a year well you sold (sighs) your ISF yeah to to help fund everything so I, I needed like cash in the bank just so that I was okay to pay the mortgage because sure. I couldn't pay it with $5,000 laptops. Right. So I sold my ISF. I paid like 30 of this. I sold it for roughly 30 or whatever. Now they're worth 50, but anyways. Um, so, and then I bought a $5,000 Lexus GS, okay. like GS 430. I dumped it made it all VIP. I still had to modify it. Very cool. Very but um, yeah, I just, I needed that cash in the bank so that I was like, okay with everything. And then uh, everything ended up working out. So I don't know the first year. I, we, the first year we, we somehow, we, you, I think we you caught up to your salary. Uh, I made, uh, yeah, I think I made as much or slightly more than I was making at my previous job. So which, like just under a hundred grand? Uh, that we had, that we would have had to split. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. around 50, $60,000 probably each. Nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. And then. Uh, so that's real. Yeah, it was, it was exactly. real at that point, and then it just kept going up and up and up a little bit here and there, and then down at the certain year months and stuff like that. But um, and that so, was no sponsors. Like, how did that? How did that progress? Like, you guys, did you guys have the just the same formula right out of the right out of the hop? How did how did that progress? And like, how do you like let people know how you kind of tweak and like what you look at to try and you know are you just looking at views to try and change things or like well this is old YouTube this is like 2017 or 2016 when we post our first video and that that YouTube was very different than today's YouTube where like the algorithm is amazing it'll send you everything and you don't even know you're subscribed you don't even have to subscribe to channels so that's today or the old algorithm today Today. okay you you don't even have to subscribe to channels they'll send it in your home feed back then right there's a lot of emphasis on subscribing okay and you have to tell people to subscribe and then you would subscribe to stuff. You'd click your subscription tab and there would be the stuff that you want to watch. But now it just serves it up to you because it's a computer and it's smarter than you. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, like the growth then was a lot quicker, I think because we had like cool filming and stuff like that. And nobody else on YouTube did. Right. And, and we also like, sort of filled the void where Top Gear was missing because okay. that was around the time that Top Gear had to go off the air. Right. And so right. there was nothing. There was Motor Trend. That was like, I think the benchmark, like we watched that, we were like, this is actually filmed incredibly well, but they also got YouTube money. So YouTube gave a bunch of uh, big companies, like I think $10 million at first to create content for the platform. Oh yeah. Okay. And so that was like the benchmark of quality. And we were like, and you we can do film, something film similar here. Yeah. And Cameraman like, but, but the, I audio, film my audio, own stuff. audio audio extraordinaire too, because okay. that's the thing is even now, like how many videos are going to have amazing audio that's accurate to the car at the same time or are they going to have dubbed over audio yeah yeah which is like you can tell it's just right away yeah Yeah, you see it yeah and people will cheat and stuff and like use like drive-by audio which is a lot easier to get than actual muffler exhaust audio yeah we were pretty bad for that in the early 2000s on the show it's hey it's you got to do what you got to do it's hard yeah (laughs) Uh, mine's still not perfect either it's like the the cars that aren't loud are very difficult to get a good sound of. It's an accurate sound, but it's not a good sound because right. the muffler is so muffling. We have the exhaust, and then with newer cars with pumped in audio, we have the exhaust. Ooh, trade secret. So if a Ooh. car has like pumped in audio and the mufflers just sound awful from the outside, we just mic up the inside and we're like, this is the sound we're using. Okay, so explain that to an old car guy like me. Okay. Pumped in audio. Wait, do you so, not know about pumped in audio? I do a little oh, bit. Oh, it's for yeah. the audience. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. So <laughs> pumped in audio, <laughs> new cars are so quiet because of noise regulations or whatever reasons, insulation, they're, they're just so quiet that they actually have to simulate the sound of the engine inside the cabin, right. whether that's through a sound actor as a uh, Volkswagen and stuff does where they actually have a physical tube used to do and, and they'll shake, they'll vibrate the windshield at the right frequency or whatever, or they'll actually have like a tube that'll sort of just, it's like an induction tube okay. or they'll actually do it through the speakers. Okay. And then, so Lexus does it through the speakers. They actually have a knob that you can control the volume of what you're hearing inside. Or and turn that's it how off. you get really good audio for quiet cars. Yeah. Interesting. So that Lexus uh, IS500 that we filmed, everybody, we uh, that's exhaust that you're hearing. <laughs> that's yeah. what we call it. Yeah. Explain kind of the process or like the, the way things progressed uh, with the channel, like your, your format. So uh, right away you started doing stuff like that and then and then how did you kind of land on your format i think even the like matrix our, video uh, well our first our first video was my honda element yes because it was like we reviewed the cars we had sure and it was like okay there's two of us 
how can we make it work? It's like, well, one wants to drive and then the other one wants to drive. So mm -hmm. obviously we both want to drive. So then we'll switch halfway through. And then we just started talking about stuff. So I guess switching drivers halfway through with one in the driver, you know, one in each seat. And we kind of just kept going from there. Cause I guess from the beginning, we always wanted to do something that was different than everyone else. Yeah. Like, like when you, even when you watched head to head on motor, on um, motor trend, it was like one person would drive one car the whole time. The other person would be in the passenger seat. And then when they'd switch cars, the other person was driving that one the whole time. Right. The other one was in the passenger seat. So I'm like, okay, I didn't get to see this guy talk about that car while driving it. Then for us, we're always like, okay, well, everyone, each of us should drive the other car to do that. And then we just started talking about stuff we liked. And then we just started realizing that, okay, this car, the emphasis is on the power. So we'll talk about that first. This car, the emphasis is on the tech. So we'll talk about the tech first. But the Toyota Matrix, my wife's Matrix, was the review that we got a like a bunch of our signature signature things that we still keep to this day. Yep. Like, I'm Yuri, I'm Jake, I'm going for a drive. Yep. Toyota Matrix, that's the first video. Okay. But before it, then, nobody had ever said their names at the start of a video. Mm. Yeah. And that, that was some advice from... that? No one? I, uh, uh, I, Brad from Motoring told Brad. us, make sure they know your name. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're like, okay, I'm Yuri, I'm Jacob, and we're going for a drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he helped out with that, like major credit to him, but he's like, make sure they know your name. And yeah, before that, I don't think people really... Started. They wouldn't state it. Yeah. I don't, so where did the, where did, so right away, like organically, people found your channel and subscribed? Or was there like, we had a couple of viral a videos. Leap. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, was the, the, the Raptor versus Shelby uh, truck comparison. Okay. That was a huge one. And then we happened to also post that same week Civic Type R, WRX, STI, and the Focus, uh, RS. Focus RS, like a triple, triple comparison, comparison, which like, it's Looking back, we're like, what the hell? How do we pull that off? Yeah, those two cars, those two videos in the same week got us like 20,000 subscribers in the course of like three weeks. And that wow. was like, in, and that went, we went from like 15,000 to 30 to 50,000 within like a couple of weeks. And it was like, that was, that wow. was wild. That was one of the indicators to us. We're like, holy, like there's something here. But, but at the start, we're like, to all of our friends, like share our videos, post it on Reddit, oh, yeah. post it in your car groups, post it on Facebook. Sure. Because like, you can't expect to organically grow. You need to put in work on like every part of it and, yep. and have people send it out. And then that's where you get good feedback. Someone's like, oh, this is interesting. Like, thanks for sharing this. And did you ever get any big help from like, I know when we were chatting about us starting the YouTube channel, you guys were talking about uh, like digging questions with like Doug DeMiro, who does a giant channel for anyone who doesn't know. Did you ever get any help from guys like that as far as like appearing on other guys who are who were more successful at the time or like did it just happen organically did they just you know uh the we didn't end show up on anybody else's channel like nobody yeah, really didn't talked about us but okay. one thing doug did do is leave a comment that said yes. great work i really like this or something okay on our triple comparison video uh civic type r no no it was a triple comparison oh there was another because one I think it was comment. so like elaborate. So he was like, oh, this is like okay. something he'd want to see. So okay. I, I actually screenshotted that, printed it out. I have it framed in my house still. I had it hanging on my wall for the longest time because that was like a little thing. That one little comment, I'm like, yes, this is something that I should, if he thinks this is a decent video or entertaining enough to leave a comment, yeah. I should stick with it. Because he had like, what, how many subscribers at that time? He was like? probably only like a million and a half. Okay. But yeah. at that point, that he was like God. Was, yeah. <laughs> right. And now he's at like probably like four and a half. He's probably at like five, five or six. Competing. I don't even know. Yeah. Him and like Donut Media are like the top YouTube channels for cars now. And Donut Media looks like they spend more money than he does. So they have a They're, they're like an advertising budget. company. Yeah. Yeah. But they also do like really, really cool content. Yeah. It's not just They do Doug. like, they do. I do watch their video. Like I don't watch that much YouTube, but I watch their videos for like a deep dive into a history yeah. on something and it's like yeah. man they research this shit and it's entertaining this. with yeah. like their animations it's like the writing is good yeah yeah, yeah like like that, but that's like a business not right. not saying doug isn't a business but like oh, a giant like a corporation exactly like funding and multiple yes. employees and stuff yeah you have like a salary job i assume so <laughs> you guys speaking of multiple employees it was always just you two i know insider baseball i know you hired your brother as your editor yeah <laughs> yeah so he's that like, was very recent that was super recent right so like from, uh, within the last year sorry from snowboard days like you're a skier right yeah. like you used to edit your own videos probably and film yeah, stuff probably not as good as you but but yeah. like you everyone did it right yeah, so everyone, everyone did we yeah. all knew how to use all the programs and like so my brother all knew that stuff from back in the day too and we had him working for like i guess a year and a half part-time just editing stuff here and there for us to help us out and 
Then uh, once the wives were both pregnant, we were like, yo, we need you full time. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, cool. And he's been editing our videos. I don't think anyone's really noticed the switch over. Okay. It was positive actually, because people really like his music choices over ours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and like, his cut scenes and like the way he blends things, people actually did notice yeah, in like they, a positive they, way. They didn't notice the editor was different. They just thought we were doing better things. So really? it was like, because he, he, he mimicked our style perfectly, but then added his flair to it. So people were like, oh, it's the same, but different and better. And he enjoys that? Yeah. 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 Because yeah, it's just like, uh, I guess. He, he has more freedom now. Yeah. That, that was, his, I guess, I don't know. Uh, uh, he, he had like, he just wanted more freedom to like go golfing and snowboarding yeah, kind yeah. of in his off time. Totally. So we give him like, hey, as long as the video gets done, you can go golfing during the day. I don't, we don't care. Yeah. Go golf all day and then edit the video at night. And then do he, whatever you want. He comes, helps us with uh, driving and filming too. And nice. like, as you probably would, if you had to film two Ferraris or something. It's like, who would be the next person that you would trust to drive a car? Yeah. That's but, tricky. Like we're not doing that, but still like we gotta, we can't just be like hey, uh high school kid come drive no, this AMG GT. It would be my brother. <clears throat> yeah. 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 So we trust him to drive the cars and like, he knows how to drive. Like we all, all grew up driving like dumb cars in the winter together and like okay. yeah, uh, rear wheel drive Camaros and Mustangs doing donuts in the Mount St. Louis Moonstone parking lot. Nice. Like classic. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's the snowboard thing. <laughs> That's good. So, but that was recent. So before that you guys were, it was just you two guys. Yeah. That's it. And you were, how were you splitting the workload? Wow. Like we just 50, 50, 50 everything, everything filming, like, editing strict. Pretty um, much like pretty it, well, like if, he if, would do the thumbnails and then I would do the title and description on videos okay. and then like that kind of level of 50 50 ness. Right. Yeah, yeah. But then, but I still stick with the thumbnails cause I guess I had so much like I was a failed graphic designer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I kinda Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now I do my best graphic design now that I'm out of the industry. Right. But um, yeah, I stick for the thumbnails because I have my own little thing. Like that's like half the fun for me. And I know like some people on the internet were mad when I said I like really enjoy the thumbnails sometimes. But it's like, it's like I, I've captured like a really nice shot with really nice lighting, and then I make it look nice, mm -hmm. like so that someone sees it and grabs it. Like yeah. I, I just really, really like that stuff. That's part of the YouTube game. So yeah. people got mad. They're like, you're not a real car guy. You like the thumbnails. It's like, it's like, why can't phot photographing a car be part of it? Like, I don't know, man. Yeah, people people on the internet, both. the comments are weird. Yeah. Well, a real, like, what, is it, what do they want? A real car guy who doesn't shoot for YouTube at all and you don't know about him and don't get to see him. I, I think they, they just want him to enjoy the driving rather than anything else about the experience of yeah. having a YouTube channel. Well, that uh, that's not the majority of ours. No. Yeah. And because like when we did the R34, R35 uh, uh, GTRs, I'm like, okay, they're both Bayside Blue. I'm like, like, for me, recording that, like filming that, editing it, and like doing the thumbnail, I have some of the footage that pretty much no one else on the internet has. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was like almost as fun, pretty much as fun as driving it because I can look back and watch the videos. Like so many people enjoyed it. Like sometimes I just like filming the cars as much as I like driving them. Yeah, you can look back on the final product. Yeah. Well, actually, my best day last year was the GT350 compared to the GT350. That yeah, was the, that was fun. That was the sickest. Because you know thing. what? You don't feel anything in new cars. No, my, that I'm was just like, like the best. Explain that video. Okay, so we did uh, a GT350 from Legendary, thanks to Gary. Uh, what year was that? Sixty-five. Five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, versus a 20, uh, 2020, 2020, 350 R, 350 yeah, okay. R yeah. with the, um, same color it? combo, same color, similar, uh, similar. Okay. Uh, it didn't have the blue stripes, the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just the sound experience of both of those. Oh, there it is. I went into it, not, I didn't expect to love the old one as much. Mm. I knew I already, cause I had previously driven a GT 350 for a very short time. I've never driven an R, but just high RPM V8, high revving, like just sounded amazing. But then the experience of that older 350 was just something else. Like I didn't expect to love that that much. It just, it gave you the feeling in your pants. Like it was just yeah. like, oh my God. Cause you yeah. don't feel, you don't feel anything in a lot of these modern cars. And then you get into something old, you're like, oh, I like cars again. I forgot it. Cause I don't know. A lot of the new cars are so chill. Well, like that's the thing. Like it's, it, they're so high performing that you have to drive like a maniac at the racetrack to get that feeling. Right, yeah. Like on the street, it's, I mean, I guess it means it's performing well, but. It's like a, like an Acura NSX. Like you can drive that like an Accord on the street. Yep. And then to get something out of it, you got to drive it at like nine tenths. Yeah, very but the, true. But then very that, that uh, 350, um, the 350R or whatever, you just, 
bro, and you're like, yeah, yeah, just just and, one, and one not going that fast, like just it, yeah, for a second, light. yeah, exactly. But yeah. just the shaking, the rumbling, like that. Oh man, that old one is so nice. The sixty-five. Oh, that's good. So now that you guys, well, you guys have kids and an editor, so things have changed recently. You do two a week. Two a week, yeah. yeah. For, Sometimes and you started three. doing two a week, like once you kind of since like twenty eighteen. Yeah, okay. we, we, we found out that, that that was the formula to get consistency was a formula to get good views and continue growth. Okay. And we committed and forced ourselves to post on the same Tuesday and Friday schedule. Okay. So that way we would just have videos no matter what. It's like, oh man, I, I have to work tonight. Sure. And get this video done at midnight or 1 a.m. or whatever so that it's ready the next day. Right. We just forced ourselves to do that. And do you think that's, like you were saying, old YouTube and new YouTube, do you think that's still part of the algorithm? Uh, I think a little bit. We sort of have examples. Like in January, we like to take a break because okay. we go so hard throughout the year, especially in December and stuff, because of the revenues are up in, in the final quarter, especially right. in December. So we go Everyone's as hard as, yeah, and we go as hard as we can in December. So we try and chill in January and we actually typically don't post for like two weeks or something. And we see our revenue obviously drop. Mm -hmm. And then when we come back, the first couple of videos seem to underperform. Hmm. And then once we're back to kind of schedule, then the videos start to like pick right, up again. Right now we're back, like right now is where this last three weeks is where we feel like 100% back to normal from the beginning of the year. Because it, it just takes a while for everything that to long. kick back in. Wow. That's what, that's what our, we feel like. We see the numbers and like the, here's where we should be right now. What we feel versus where we were in January took this long to get here again by taking hmm. a two-week break. Interesting. It is, but I don't know. Because <laughs> I was going to ask you, like now that we're... Like, so we've been doing them every week since we started doing it. And I'm wondering if, if, like, I'm not trying to achieve the same thing as you guys are. Like, I'm not trying to make a living off of it. I'm just trying to put out better quality content with maybe like a little bit more like historical background or something to it. Do you think it's suicide to go twice a month instead of every week? It's And try and just gain more views, you if know. You, if you can go viral, if you can find a right. car that matters more and... Yes. And make it better. Yes. But for us, we don't want, we can't do that because we need to review crappy cars. Yeah. Because we are consumer advice. Like well, let's say normal cars, normal. Okay. Normal cars, non-exciting cars. Yes. No, no, I get it. Yeah. So like if we have to review a Sentra because it's a new Sentra, like we can't just be like, I only want to review a Bugatti because then we're not the channel that we used to be. So we have to go more often because we don't go as viral as often. Right. Like we reviewed a Chevy's Traverse. Traverse, yeah. We're yeah. No, no. I, and that's what I mean. Like you guys are in a different boat. You have to, you have to do it. Yeah. But like if you got like a crazy like a uh, Formula One car or something that you want to do a video on, like, yeah, you do, one, do one of those a month and, and then do like a hyper car a month. Like that's, that will go more viral than. Okay. It should. It should. Yeah. You never yes. know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There, you're always guessing. Yeah. So you never actually know. No, no. That's the thing. Like, that's what I found. And you never know. No. It's just like, like why did this? Like, I, uh, like, we got a good example. So see the, the thumbnail for the LX600? So I made the grill look ridiculous, right? Yeah, it looks it, like a, you've got a cow catcher on the yeah, front of it. But I only extended it like a couple of things down. Like, it is a pretty big grill. It's yeah. got like two extra rungs or three extra rungs. But like, when, when I see it, I'm like, okay, the grill, like, like that's how big it actually is. I accentuated oh, I didn't it. even realize that's obnoxious. I accentuated it for the thumbnail, that's real. but I like it. I like the way it looks. Yeah, yeah. And that video went viral. We have like a million views on it. Okay. From nine days ago. And we think oh, wow. because yeah. of the thumb. Yeah. So it's like once in a while you do something a little different and it works. And now it's like, should I Photoshop all my thumbs to be wacky? But you also have been doing sort of wacky, but not to that extent in certain cars already. Hmm. Yeah. You hear that, Mitch? We got to put a giant wing on every single car for the thumbnail. Well, we actually have done that in the past. Yeah, so the, okay. if you dip in the straight pipes, uh, mini GP. So throughout the day, I made the spoil the wing bigger and bigger. Throughout the whole video? Throughout, no, throughout, no, the, throughout day, the day. I, you, would I kept, so that, that's, <laughs> you would update the thumbnail that's to the fake. point that... That, 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 that yeah. the wing is bigger, but at one point it was going off the whole screen. Yeah, the, so we, we settled on that one. That's hilarious. And the comments throughout the day were like, does the wing keep getting bigger? It's like, it's <laughs> People not, are tripping out. People kept coming back to the video. They're like, is he going to update the thumbnail again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. So you just have to find those things. I guess it's just keep, like... See, that's how big the wing actually, it's not as big as the thumbnail was, but like, but then we've heard this random, you know, stuff from people that actually uh, know YouTube probably better than us. 
and saying like you shouldn't update the thumbnail too often because then it gets thrown into a new algorithm thing apparently. Oh, like an update or an edit something on the video once something, it's released. Yeah, yeah, yeah if yeah, you yeah, change the title that. or the thumbnail. So again, we don't know, but we've just done this stuff and we're like, okay, Does sometimes. anyone know like the algorithm no, under no. the hood? No. We keep asking. We're like we've talked to people at YouTube, like yeah. the algorithm person, like, I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> Really? Well, because it's yeah. computers too figuring it out. Like, exactly. They, so you like, don't even really people know. People at Google probably don't fully know. There's right. probably not one person with enough information at Google. The, the AI is like, run away. The, oh, AI, yeah. the AI is yeah. doing good. Well, you saw what happened before when the AI was sending like, um, like, like, like it was making uh, Nazis more like Nazi-ish. Like it was sending oh, Nazi content to people yeah. because they looked at the wrong stuff. It was like stuff. Facebook, right? Was it yeah, Facebook? Yeah, it, well, oh. it was YouTube too. Okay. I don't know if you want to cut that sort of out because I don't know if you want that, those things. But it was no, like, no, no, we talk about anything on this. It was just like, yeah, so they're like, then YouTube was like, oh, we got to fix the algorithm because we're actually doing something. Supporting wrong. It was, the it was working of right-wing nationalists. But it was something. getting views and, and stuff. It's right. Like, okay, we, so it's, we they're making advertising money, so they're like, should we stop this? The, yeah. It's like, we tone the computer down. It's working a little too well <laughs> in the wrong way. Interesting. Okay, so number one answer, apparently, uh, for kids nowadays, what they want to do when they grow up is a YouTuber. Yeah, I've heard that. It's funny to have like the kid's dream job. Yeah, yeah, totally. Now, it's become more and more like, I guess when YouTube started, there weren't that many YouTubers. Like now it's like a genre of, right. of thing to do, right? It's, it's a profession. It's an occupation now. Can you break down how the monetization works, like just in very general terms for people? Like how it, it calculates different numbers per thousand views stuff like that sure so for all the kids who want to be youtubers okay kids and you got no chance if you want to be <laughs> you're yeah go to go to university no i don't even know if that's a good go to trade school yeah but but that's don't answer. but yeah. don't not try I, I, I got a good one be an electrician so you can fix all the charging stations okay <laughs> um so here's what you do so the way that the money comes in it really depends on where the views come in from so if uh youtube gets ad revenue from United States and they get high ad revenues, you're going to, as a result, get more money for, for your video. So it, it's kind of weird if you, if people are watching anecdotally, like our, uh, some of our videos go viral in like India. Okay. Those views are worth less per dollar than a view from America because of advertising rates. Understandable. So if we get 3 million views on a video that mostly got views in India, we would make significantly less money than a video that got 3 million views from USA. Okay. So that's there's weird stuff like that. See, but I, you can't control that. Right. Well, you, yeah. you can. You can just make it not appealing to places right. with... Uh, I guess, but like... But then your video doesn't go viral and people don't know the behind the scenes so I can show that video with 6 million views well or like 3 million or 2 million and just be like I have 2 million views look how good I am but uh, they don't know that those are from a country that doesn't get as many sell anything to Ex exactly that could happen lucky for us we're like very very highly US and like Southern since, California <laughs> actually, it's just yeah. all over the states but okay. yeah but like we're 50% US and like yeah. 10 to 15% Canadian audience and the rest is just like small like scattered through every other country and since we don't really go viral all our views are very consistent so okay yeah so it ranges from what $1 to what we, per I honestly views? don't even we don't, really, we don't even know no. we don't even look and at it that. changes through time of the year and on the car and like what ad campaign is advertising so say um if a honda's advertising but yeah. then they're advertising against uh centra videos so if we put out a centra video at that time then we'll get a whole bunch of money be from it because that's targeted by it, it really well, depends we're guessing on the time well. of season okay and like who's launching what car because sometimes people will comment and be like funny i got an ad for the competitor when you posted this video and it's like that's because someone's doing that like that's not us like we have no control over that right do you guys i'm um, do you guys hunt sponsorship actively oh not anymore no we've not got for our, a while actually okay we've got continental yeah we've got continental's our, been with us for a couple years now they've been fantastic yeah. True Car, which is uh, in the States, helps you get a car like fully online so you can get like the dealer pricing and you don't have to like haggle and stuff like that, which has been really good. And then we have a new sponsor that's joining us uh, next week. Is it going to be the first video? Yeah. So by the time this podcast yeah, goes yeah, live, yeah. well, it's, go? it's Sirius XM. Okay. Yeah. And like I've been a fan good. of Sirius XM since like the first press car. And um, yeah, so we're, we're kind of like... We're, we're saying like, no to everyone else. There's nice. actually one more, but that's for a separate series, which we can't talk about yet. Yeah. But uh, we've got our like our, our main like three sponsors that we're super happy with for the channel, and it's all stuff that we really like. And yep. I th we're just 
Yeah, we, every, we, we've been hunting. We've been hunting sponsors, and then we got them, and now we we don't want to hunt any more sponsors. We're just happy. Sure. Yeah, because yeah, with sponsors come obligations and yeah. obligations and lawyers and legal contracts. That it just it's that's the part of YouTube that sucks is like having to deal with contracts. Yeah. We're, we're like we're lawyers. We're like everything at this point. Oh, you got to sub that out. Well, we did. Okay. But we still have to also double check that. Make sure read it. Yeah, because like the terms are very specific to what we only us know on YouTube. Okay. So like if we hired someone, they would have to learn all of YouTube stuff to get what what we know is either like a good thing or bad thing to put in a contract. Okay. Yo, shout out our lawyer. Yes. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> unnamed she, lawyer. She has uh, she has saved us uh, a lot of time and money as L- well. Literally the best lawyer I could have ever asked for. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, like it seems it seems like it just insane hours. It is. I, I remember when we sat down, I asked you guys, and you guys are like. Like, what does it take to be successful on YouTube? And you're like, live it was, yeah. I think, your answer. Yeah. You're still living it as much as when you started? No. Oh, yeah. Well, we're living YouTube life, but with the editor, we can live our actual lives. Like, we haven't, we haven't edited a video Sunday night. Like, when's the last time you sat down yes. and, like, worked a crazy, like, sat down at 6 p.m. on a Sunday to just get a video done? Eh, it's been kind of recent. I forget what video. But, <laughs> but like, but but not, not as bad. No, it's, yeah. it's 100% not been as close to as bad as it was, thanks to having an editor. But um, you still have to live it. Like we're still every day, like we're, we're Checking able to analytics sp- and comments, but like we're able to spend a lot more time with our family now, which is great. But at the same time, you're always checking your phone. Like I, that email sound, I just want to throw my phone at the wall. Cause like, that's all it is now. It's like, what's this email? What is this email? I have to continue checking this. Yeah. How did the video do today? Yeah. How's the video doing from yesterday? It's nonstop. How's Instagram comments? How's Instagram views? Like if you got offered like a top gear style, just like one paycheck, a good paycheck and what 22 episodes a year or something like that would you do it no i mean uh, youtube is like youtube is sick like it's it's nice we're our own boss yeah. we have to answer to people we don't have like well like a, i would like to do that just to see what it would look like okay i would and i wouldn't do like, i would do like a special it, yeah okay. like maybe five episodes maybe like just i'm the actor and then that it gets handed off and I just, see what it ends up looking like. I just want to take over from motoring TV. I've been telling Brad, I'm like, Brad, <laughs> get me on TSN. Let's go. We were on one season in 2017. We had a couple episodes. We gave him some footage. But like, hey, everyone's getting older. Just film us. Bring out the beta cam with the VHS or whatever. <laughs> but that was the coolest because I remember people were like, hey, I saw you at the bar on motoring TV because TSN is always on at bars. Yeah, and the gym. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so they're like, I saw you on motoring TV. I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are... Like you're, f- you're famous now. Kind it's of. It's weird to say, but yes, to, to certain you, people, you get recognized in the streets all the time. We used to before masks. Now, like if I'm wearing like a mask at the mall, like I barely get recognized. I got recognized at Home Depot yesterday. Yeah, I got recognized at the grocery store the other day. It's like nonstop. I'm sure most of your fan. I'm sure one. I'm sure most of your fans are male and this age, but. I'm there's, sure most of them are cool. They are. But Every, there's also females. Yeah. I've, I've had females come up to me like, okay. hey, I can't believe I'm meeting you. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. We're, we're <laughs> up to a uh, 6% female audience in oh. the last 28 days. That's up from like 2%. Like most car, car channels are like 2%. Wow. We but, used to um, be there. I, we assume that a lot of uh, female audience is also watching uh, while their boyfriends or husbands or whatever are watching on For the sure. TV. Because if it's logged into like... Uh, Jacob's account the algorithm and you're making your wife watch something like yep. she's watching it but it's not counting as two views and a uh, right and right, then I, okay so it could be higher than that I we, actually we get hope, yeah we, we I actually get like a bunch of DMs from people's wives oh. saying like uh, can you do my husband <laughs> can you do my husband a favor he's a really big fan of your show his birthday's coming up okay like I'll get a lot of those types of DMs yeah and but, then we'll send him a video or something like hey happy birthday Jim What's like the weirdest shit fans have ever done? Like, if, are there some weirdos weirdos out there? Oh yeah, yeah. I just want to yeah. talk about it because yeah. then it'll just promote people to keep doing weird yeah. stuff. So oh, there's there, definitely there, there's a bit of, of weirdoness, but generally it's really good. Yes, and I think our popularity has slightly gone down in which, terms of our celebrityness. Yeah, like people aren't as like, oh my god, it's straight It's like, yeah, straight Because okay. now there's a lot more YouTubers around. True. Right. Yeah. I, I think I don't know. Well, and like everyone's like friends are like doing the same type of thing on Instagram, even if they are only broadcasting to their friends. Right. Everyone seems to be doing like the influencer thing. So it's like, yeah, all right. Oh yeah. Those are just other influencers or YouTubers or whatever. People are becoming acclimatized to it, I guess. Probably. Yeah. yeah. But everyone's like generally like really nice. 
And uh, no, it's fun. I mean, like me getting, I get spotted in the Prowler like constantly because it's like, there's like one other guy with a yellow Prowler in <laughs> Toronto. Quite the vehicle to drive around in. Yeah, yeah. So I get a lot of ways like, hey, yo, what's up? And then I'll just like rip by and yeah, like that, that, those are my favorite interactions because then they actually see the car and you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, what, like you guys are big enough now that fans kind of like know about your, like who you guys are what's something that that they keep wanting to know about you guys that that's like a, re- a request how we met yeah. but we keep explaining yeah. it yeah. Every, no, high school. like something you haven't said before well, oh. we explain your beard okay that's that could be the fun that's one that's like a juicy piece for it's, your it's fans. not it's not juicy not really it's just funny yeah so uh one year i just decided to stop shaving well because you went on uh, <laughs> you I, went I went on vacation i went on vacation to cuba and i was like i'm not bringing a razor okay and then i just didn't shave he, he came he came back he's like yo i, I think I, I like this and that was before your, your mustache fully grew in yeah because i had like a very like my mustache sucks compared to the rest of my beard so it took a while for that to come in so there's several videos where i look like Wolverine. jacob's got that he's got <laughs> the Wolverine slash or saber tooth like slash yeah, yeah, yeah. style beard and then and now he's then, got the beard ever since yeah so it I literally like people are like oh was it a bet like I just literally stopped shaving yeah. one time when I went to vacation I just kept it and my wife like wanted me to shave it and then now she likes it but now it took a while it. it took a while for her to come around to it and now the fans would be pissed if you shaved it Probably they'd be like, who's this Jake, guy Jake again? would be the most angry if he shaved I love his beard. Yeah, I call this Jacob 2.0. Yeah, you're this a is, new man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's funny. <laughs> uh, I, I guess it, like going back to like how you guys split everything 50 50 and and that's like was there ever like friction for like who does what or anything like that or are you guys pretty buddy buddy and it's all good we i think we designed the whole company around making sure we could work together mm-hmm. yeah. and uh keep everything because like like we get on each other's nerves all the time over stuff but like oh, yeah. we also like uh really appreciate each other and like we're good friends and like we know what we're doing is like our business and we're going to keep this going until we die that's okay. the goal like yeah. like i i just want to be like 70 years old and just being like right, i'm gonna upload youtube or whatever just just keep it going yeah, yeah for sure if hopefully youtube's still around but yeah exactly we, we just designed it around making sure that we could continue to do it so if, if there was something like like i want to do a monthly road trip and do this with this and the other person's like no it's not realistic like we we just tone it down. Like we don't need to over excel. Okay. We just need to be good. It like, we just need to be on the same page and be happy working. Yeah, right. Pretty much. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, you guys have like your, your, your image is, is tied to some degree because you're both, you know, a part of the channel and you're both, but you're both individuals. Like you, you guys are both on Instagram and you do a separate YouTube channel and stuff. Is there any, anything like that's like off limits for like what, you know, Yuri's going to show on his Instagram channel or, or talk about or anything like that, that would hurt the brand or you guys both like level headed enough that. Yeah. We're pretty, we're pretty smart about like what's a red flag or whatever. But like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm posting like action figures and like mowing my lawn. Cause the thing is, there's no time to really do anything else. Like I'm actually, like I tell him, like, I don't know how you release that video. I'm like, where did you have time to do your action figure video? It's like, we, we don't have all this extra time that people might think we have, but it's like any, any extra time that I feel like I have, I want to spend it with my family or like other friends or whatever, or just like go for a walk in the park or something like that. It's like, there's not much more time that I feel like I have that I can do things that I shouldn't be doing or something like that. Shouldn't be doing, yeah, yeah. For, for yeah. me, it's like those things are just like something I really want to do. Like if I, like I did like a video on like my uh, X-Men cards or like my action figures and it's like, I want to put that down so that it's saved mm. on YouTube so I can look back in 20 years and remember it. Because I've got like videos from when I was living with my buddies and we were doing like dumb stuff and I got those videos saved and it's like, it's just a nice, I, I know if I don't put in the effort, I might like forget that moment. Yep. And I, I just like make time to make a fun video. And then like the lawnmower reviews and stuff. Like I got a sick lawnmower Yo, for free. Now I'm into lawn mowing. I bought a John Deere. Mm, you bought it, but you got it for free. I got, I got, a, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Cause if <laughs> Jacob wanted to make some videos, if he, if he made some time, he would have got a free lawnmower, True. but instead he's spending his hard earned car money. He's buying, right. buying Sucker, a John Deere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks to Yuri doing his lawn mowing stuff, he got me a connection with uh, big league lawns. So now I'm going to have a lawn striper on my John Deere. They're actually sending me uh, what the today. It's a lawn striper. Oh, okay. So you, you, know how, you know how they get the stripes in the grass? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So it's, you have to have weight to push down the grass. Right. So what you do is for his John Deere for like a big property, um, you'll have a, like a big cylinder kind of thing that rolls behind okay, everything. Okay, I know what you're talking about. And then that puts the line down. Okay. And then they, they adapt it to different machines and stuff like that, so. 
Yeah, nice. he had and to have my uh, cutting deck specs and spec it out right and everything. Yeah. Yeah, but like, you gotta have stripe, stripe life. Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. That's the thing. I'm Once I got board. my mower, I'm like, I need, uh, I need stripes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're out in the country and you're in the city. Yeah, I used to live around here-ish. Yeah, uh, I don't want to reveal too much, no, but no. I, I finally moved out of the city to get what I wanted. So yeah, I had to move farther out to get the space and garages that I wanted. Is that gonna be like? Like with your kids and stuff, is that going to be like dirt bikes and like fishing and like in the woods and stuff like that? Sort of, yeah, yeah. To, to some degree. Yeah, for sure. Like there, there's deer in my backyard. I'm like, this is the sickest thing ever. Oh, nice. I got, I've got coyotes in my front yard. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. True. you do have some wildlife <laughs> for sure. The, that's the city. Raccoons and... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Can I put up a deer stand in your backyard? <laughs> you know how many of my buddies have asked me? Yeah. Oh my God. I can show you pictures on my phone. Like I can see them out my kitchen window. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Put the deer stand on his balcony or something. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of my hunting buddies have already asked that. Yeah. I, I believe it. <laughs> the only thing that I can think of, um, that like you sometimes get political on your Instagram, like a little bit. Do you ever get pushback from yeah. like fans who are like, yeah. Yuri doesn't have the same politics as me. Well, we don't we don't post that on the straight pipe stuff because okay. like we keep that what it is. Yeah. And then like yeah. if I post some stuff on my own, like yeah, some people are like I came here for this, not that. I'm like yo, I'm like posting action figures. I'm posting lawns. Like I don't even know why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> like like this like my Instagram is less about like trying to get like like likes and go viral and all this stuff, and more of like like my YouTube channel kind of. Uh, like a bank of my memories sure. of what I was doing. So I can go back and just be like my trip with Jacob here, my trip there, here, like me doing this and like what car I had that week. Like same with my private Instagram. That was like my personal one. It's like, oh, it's just like an archive of like my photos of a certain time. So like, yeah, I mean, we, we just, I just post whatever I want there. Yeah. And that's why like at the top, it says my personal account. Yeah. Jacob is his personal account. And that way we kind of keep that split. But yeah, people get mad sometimes. I'm like, Look, like I'm a person. Like you expect me to have the same politics as everyone. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah, I straight up. I you're in, obviously knows this. Like, I straight up hate politics. So okay. I just I don't I don't want to post about it because I don't like politics. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. I post about what I like. That's it. Yeah, that's all you can ask for when you're following someone's personal Instagram account. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Do you guys do? Uh, like, are you? I guess you guys you already answered this question that like you're set. You're not trying to find other sponsors. Do you guys do like merch and stuff like that? We tried. We do. We have a merch page, but we don't really actively promote it. It's it's like if you want to buy the a sweater with our logo on it or a coffee mug, cool. But I think you need to be like, you need to have a large audience of younger people, like under 18. If you want to be selling merch, you need to be like viral and like wacky and people want to be you like Mr. B style. Mm. Or like We're Donut like, Media. I feel like they... I'm guessing they're probably very su- successful in merch. Because they've got like, it's like, uh, it was almost like a club, like Hoonigan. Yeah. And for us, like we're, you know, back to, we review a Chevy Traverse once in a while. Right. People are like, oh, look at those guys review the Chevy Traverse, and <laughs> you get a shirt. Uh, like, yeah. People have bought our merch and stuff. Like we've made some money off it, but it's it's like, it's we're back to the laptop money thing. We're not like liv- livable money thing. Yeah. And we did like mm-hmm. some fun designs here and there, but like the amount of effort that you put into a shirt and stuff. And then like, I like wearing like sponsor shirts or wacky shirts. Like Jacob got into Hawaiian shirts last year year and I'm like, oh that's nice yeah. this guy was giving me a hard time our first two years but wearing hawaiian shirts and now this guy's all yeah yeah go oh, new one every week i wore them like <laughs> ironically and then i kind of like them yeah yeah <laughs> oh to make fun of you no i just oh. I, I just like everyone's buying these stupid things i'm just gonna buy them like i don't even like how these look i'm like what's the most floral one i can get and then, just, and then then you're like hawaiian shirt life exactly that's funny <laughs> now i love them so are you rubbing off on Jacob with the? Uh, I, 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 I think a little I bit. think he has. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, because <laughs> you're always wearing like, like snowboard style hoodies and stuff. Yeah, because like. It, like it's hard not to. Like I've always liked the bright, colorful stuff. Like that's just me. Mm-hmm. But then now with all the sponsors that we have that we like, like I like wearing the branded shirts because I just like to give back as much as I can. For so sure. that even while I'm reviewing this car. Someone can see it's like more advertising, I guess, but I, I do like them. Like we got these amazing continental uh, winter jackets that we wear year round. Like, uh, like our <laughs> dude, it's hot out today. <laughs> it, well, yeah, it wasn't this morning when it was like 70 kilometers. But it's winds. like a nice coat. And then I got the continental thing on it. And it's just sometimes Actually, the clothes are just nice to wear. Holly. <laughs> yeah. Holly uh, sponsored uh, some parts on my Fox body and stuff. So perfect. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I live my life in in hats from race car sponsors. Ah, like, yeah, that's it. yeah. I've got so many hats like that. And I got like a, I've got this green Hyundai hat up there yep. that I bought at the Alabama factory tour from the gift shop there. 
and I'm like, this is a cool color. I never see hats this color. And I just like, and it's got like the logo, the motto for the factory. It's like, it's like, it's like work hard to build Hyundais or something. It's like, I just, <laughs> that's just like my go-to hat. People get so mad at Yuri when he wears that hat in non-Hyundai videos. No, like even he, anything. Yeah. I'll wear it in like an AMG video and like, why are you wearing a Hyundai hat? I'm like, this is so crazy. I can't believe he's wearing, I can't believe Nissan let you in to, to review the uh, Z with that hat on. It's so disrespectful. He's like, oh my oh, goodness. Just the, Hyundai, the Hyundai hats to mess with people too, though, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. like, who's really? We're well, you haven't driven the new Hyundais, oh, like I the ends. Like they're actually like they're sick. Yeah. The ends. You got to, <laughs> dude. I've I was a Hyundai salesman for a month in 2016. No, no, way before that. Sorry. Jeez, I was 16. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah they like got a long time ago. They got really good in the last like five years. Like really good. Okay. You want me to get you a press car for a bit? We actually have one yeah, soon. You can drive it around. We have a. We can get you an Elantra N or a Kona N. Elantra they're, they're, N. We'll well, the Kona, the, yeah, they do some weird stuff. But there's like the Veloster N is really, really good. Have you driven the Type R? No. Okay. Type R is really, really good. I haven't driven like any new cars. Okay. Drive. Uh, I drive every new GMC truck. Okay. That's it. Like no, no. Like just the twenty five hundred. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> that's, that's like the tow vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. Sometimes we get a Ford. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, whole different person. world. <laughs> totally. Oh, yeah. Man. Like, like, um, I had no appreciation for front wheel drive until okay. we started doing like press cars and then like the like type R and then like the Elantra GTN line and stuff. And then I was like, Oh my God, like front wheel drive is cool. Cause I guess like you, you probably like you look at front wheel drive and you're like, not, not here. Yeah, I, definitely not here. But like I've driven, uh, I'm trying to think I've done like an endurance race in like a, an old civic that was front wheel drive. It was pretty impressive in the rain. Uh, but other than that, it's like, it's pretty weird. Yeah. yeah like pretty weird it's to not, get used to. It's not ideal. But then you, you, like, I've really learned to appreciate it. And mm -hmm. I think that was one of the fun things that I never thought. Cause like, you know, when like too fast, too furious came out Yeah, and they're like, they're racing the muscle car guys. I'm like, come on, muscle car guys. Come on, Yanko Camaro. And now I'm oh. like, all right, all right, Mitsubishi's let's go. <laughs> let's show these guys who's boss. Like I, my, I, my mind has changed a lot. That's funny. I would have, I would have pegged you as the other guy. Back in the day, I was all American cars. Like I did not like anything JDM. I thought Civics were stupid, and uh, now I like everything. But yeah, I was way way off. <laughs> huh? I guess I guess they're good in the snow, though. I can appreciate them there. But they yeah. can't drift. And exactly. Like, I'm like I've you use the park and brake. Yeah, but that's yeah. not fun. But now now they're all like uh, either a foot brake or a little digital uh, thing that you have to like. It, it's literally like a, a a button that big, and it's just on or off. Oh. Can you do it quick? Like, no, it, no, no. You can't it's like it's like you it? won't no. do it while it won't let you do it while driving because it knows you're doing something stupid. So and it's on or off. You can't like flick it or anything. Like it's just on. We used just... to drive a minivan when we'd always go up skiing and like in the parking lot with the foot brake. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hammer it on and, and then you got your hand it. To... No, no, it was the foot release. Oh, the foot well, release. So you're like oh, okay. kicking it twice. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are fun. So I was watching. Um, I was I was I looked you guys up like you know, yesterday on YouTube before, uh, before this to try and see if you guys had done any other podcasts. And I saw you guys did Lou later. later yeah. Yeah. Later. And he's like a tech guy. So yeah. if, if you type in uh, unbox therapy, his real channel, his like main channel is like what, like 15 million probably button or 20. Let's see. What is it? It's, is he from Toronto? Uh, uh the GTA area, I guess. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you call it Toronto, but, yeah. um, yeah. So his podcast channel. Oh geez. It's massive. Yeah. yeah that's his, unboxed it because he does unboxing right like he's the oh. guy who like i guess made that really popular with you know opening phones and stuff and uh then lou later is his like i guess his other channel where he can just say what he wants do podcasts do different things and uh and what he just call you guys up or whatever to do an interview yeah yeah hit me yeah. up on twitter i'm like yeah this will be fun cool. and like his his studio and everything was like really really cool because he's into electric cars oh okay yeah so i watched there was one that was just like a six minute clip I don't know, you guys, you guys didn't really seem keen to talk about it then, but it was like, it was about, it was labeled beef. Uh, beef wait. with another, with, with other did, car guys? Okay, let's just address this. Yeah, it was, dude, it caught my eye. I was like, okay. I watched the whole video. Yeah. So yeah, we were trying to avoid it, and then I think like all the comments were like, like, they got everything wrong too. People assumed it was something else, but it's like something totally different than what they thought. So what is it? Well, again, we don't, we don't just, we'd rather talk to them directly about it, sure. but it's like, 
they've apologized for what they did. So there was an incident, okay. a couple incidents. They've apologized. This for is another it. YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Throttle House. Okay. So they're they're arguably better than us because they get way more views and have way more uh, subscribers. Yeah. Their production quality is better. They have a whole team. Anyways. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they're uh, yeah, like they they did some stuff. They apologized for it. We would like to move on. Yeah. If they want to collaborate, hit us up. Let's do some drag oh, races. But the, the thing is. Good. It was like at the time I was just like I was like nah I'm like I'm not ready to like right. I was just still we don't want to put anyone on blast like publicly no like, no which at, of at the time though I was still bitter and then like mm. right after like we'd assume we would see each other at like press events and stuff and then like we'd eventually like hang out and stuff but then COVID happened so then you don't see each other for like two years right so it's like this uh. thing that happened like two and a half years ago nobody's right into it's each bastard. other and then just yeah. people on the internet. Like hyping up some beef that like nobody cares about, and right? nobody knows what happened. So everyone's just so making up stories. Bigger than than they think it's bigger than what it was. Yeah, it's yeah. like literally like nothing. They think we're jealous. We're not jealous. Like <laughs> it's it was, I don't know. It's just weird. Okay. We, we would so love. You guys are good. To, we'd love to move past it. Okay. Like yeah. yeah. Have you guys chatted since? Uh, yeah, I've tried, chatted with Thomas a couple times. Okay. I've uh, ran into him. Well, yeah, same thing that happened on like the Lou Later thing mm. that I mentioned, but I haven't seen him since. Those guys go down to like California. They're doing the smart thing. They're moving down to California for a couple months at a time. Oh, damn. We, we wanted there. to do this prior to COVID. Yeah, yeah. That's we had a, a whole plan to, do, to go down. But now you can't because you're going to copy them? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, yeah. it, it, was, it was COVID that stopped that. It was like, yeah, we're going to go down. We're going to road trip. We're going to collab with everyone. And then COVID happened. And we're like, okay, I guess we're stuck in Toronto and then it was like oh our wives are pregnant it's like okay mm. yeah let's just uh prioritize just keeping our channel going and like raising families now yeah, so. yeah. get what we can kind of here and do our best basically and travel like if we really need to but like to go for a week to work it's kind of we can't do that anymore at least right. not for a while so is it do you guys still kind of have that idea maybe in the future of spending winters down in the states Maybe. Mm, I don't know. I like, I kind of just like being home and like hanging out. And yeah. I just hate winter filming here. <laughs> if I, if, 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 the, if the wives and the kids can come down. Exactly. For that's... like maybe like a three week vacation, film a bunch of things. But then still yeah. it's like, I don't want to film cars in California on like roads I don't know. And if mm -hmm. it's a performance car, like, do I have a track that I can use? Like you can, like here we can use uh, TMP Cayuga and it's like amazing. Yeah. Like they're very welcoming. And I just don't want to be like doing that stuff in the States. Like. Like what track can I rent from Santa Monica or like get access to and like how much is it going to cost? And it's almost not like feasible. True. But you bet you could go somewhere in like the Midwest and be cheap. But, but then, then that's not all the cars. cars. The whole point oh, is to go to California, California because all the good press cars are there. Right. That's why they go there, which and, and they're And they're actually sense. getting it done. But they're... I keep forgetting about that element of your, your filming. Yeah. Getting the cars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get cars in Canada, like super hard. How important for your video performance is the car? the most important very important okay. yeah we think we have like a hundred thousand subscribers that are like diehards and will watch anything that we do out, out of, of 1.5 million wow the rest we think is car related so like when they they don't watch every video obviously but the, when they see a car they like they they yeah. watch it and the majority do watch a lot of the videos okay. but obviously you can tell not every video has 1.5 million views sure and that's just the way YouTube works. Like right. You like some, like if you checked your subscriptions on like your personal thing, you'd probably have like dozens of pages that you forgot you subscribed to or things that you're not interested in anymore. Right. But like, you're not going to go and unsubscribe from them. That's more like Instagram for me. I don't really subscribe to YouTube. I don't watch YouTube. Yeah. Even though you told me I had to. <laughs> I was going to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's, it's a lot more of a time suck on YouTube. Because you got to watch the whole. Yeah the whole episode or like 20 minute episode exactly and so all your episodes are 20 minutes Ish, uh we like try 15. to go 12 to no longer than 21 minutes that's our goal yes because once you see that 20 in like the bottom right corner you're like oh do i really have enough time to commit to that but if we can get it down under 20 so, so it's a night uh. so it's a teen we feel better about that but sometimes sometimes the longer videos perform better yeah and there's like if if you actually break down what you want to talk about in cars like it's hard to talk for less than like 13 minutes if you want to talk about everything in a car and for sure. two of us right so you know we want to get both of our opinions across right and you guys are pretty thorough like yeah. you go through try to be yeah. yeah like in different things like i feel like i talk a lot more about infotainments and user experience stuff than a lot of other channels do yeah and uh i like i really like that and i used to talk a lot more about like the looks body lines like little weird things but i think people kind of hated me talking about that, like pointing out body lines, pointing out like weird things in taillights and headlights. Mm. They're like, just show the car, I don't care. But even like 
I made you, I forced you, I rubbed off on you to the point where like you notice body lines and reflections and stuff a lot more than you used to. And taillights. And taillights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure you have. I love taillights. Like taillights are like one of my favorite things. You know, you see yeah. a car from far away, yeah. you're like, that looks cool. Or a lot of them Not just headlights. blend in. <laughs> headlights too. <laughs> headlights is tricky because they're not always on and, and <laughs> tail, taillight designs, you can get more creative. Uh, that's good. Uh, I saw on your Instagram, you were drifting. What's yeah. this? Okay, New so career? I, the only motorsport I ever really wanted to do is sliding cars. Cause it's kind of like snowboarding where, you know, motorsport racing, if you don't come in first, it kind of sucks. Yeah. And like you're at a, you know, you need to build your car up. Maybe your car's not up to, to mm. spec with everyone else is. And then it's, it's more, I guess it's more hazardous. It could be on like faster tracks, but on, sure. on drifting, it's like, oh man, that felt good. I'm happy. But if you don't come in first or something happens in a race, it's not as satisfying. Yes. So for me, it's like, I can, I can go to this drift day, take like one, it's like snowboarding. You take a, a, yeah. a run in the train park, you do a cool trick. You're like, I feel good. Yes. Somebody filmed that and I have a cool photo of it. Like I'm happy. Right. I get it. I get it. And, um, I guess like, it's like always kind of a dream to do like a Ken Block, Jim Connor video kind of thing. We're like, you know, I've put together like a cool snowboard edit. Like, obviously I'm not going to close down streets and like do cool stuff. Maybe I'll, I'll try to film one at a, a racetrack one day, but yeah, it's fun. I went to my first uh, drift day, a drift jam, and I got the hydraulic handbrake on there. Okay. Next up, I'm getting an angle kit. On the, what year? 350Z, 2003. 2003, 350Z. I bought it, for, bought it from a guy who drifts. Okay. So, so it was set up a little bit to drift? I think it was going to turn into a drift car, okay. but all we did was add the handbrake and it was like lowered. And then I put like uh, skinnier tires in the back, or skinnier wheels. Yeah. So that I have like less traction because it's stock power. Okay. But uh, yeah, angle kit. And then I think I'm going to need a LSD because I don't want to weld the diff because it's not a full track car yet. Okay. Because I did put four four wheels mounted inside the car to get to the track with all like the jack nice. and everything. Nice. So I like it. Yeah. So how'd it go? Like, was it like, was it a competition? No, this was a house league. So it was kind of everyone just like, getting better. Okay. And um, the guys who just run it, like organize it. And then there was a lot of spectators, like more spectators than I thought for just like a chill drift day. Hmm. But it was good. I had a couple of good lines. I had an instructor come with me and um, take me around and like show me a couple of things to do differently and initiate with the handbrake more than like going into it. And he was like, told me the limits of my car because I don't have the angle kit or the LSD or the certain amount of power. Yep. He said, I drive like a grip driver, which I was like, oh no. Like, What's a grip driver? Like someone who's actually trying to you drive fast. Oh, okay. Like someone who's trying to go fast. To do the, the racing line. Okay. He's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, you can use the, this part of the track. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not getting as loosey goosey and doing as silly stuff as I should be because like in my head, I'm still like stick to this part of the track to do this. Right. The racing line. Yeah. yeah. So, um, no, it was, it was fun. I'm going to keep going and doing more stuff. I don't know if I'm going to compete yet. Yeah. I think I'm just like happy, like learning the skill and especially with like trying to like with all the hobbies I have already. I think if I can get out like five times in a year, like I'm good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a good number. You have any aspiration to drift? Uh, I mean, I like it. Yeah. Uh, it would be fun to have one, but I'm my main thing is to get my damn fox body on the road, which has taken two years. Oh, on the road? Like just it, to get it on the road? Yeah. Okay. It what year is it? Uh, 87. So it took a while to get it painted. Yeah. It took a while to get the engine stuff because COVID delays and everything. So it's just like a thing that should have taken... I don't know, a year, maybe six months or whatever, it's just dragged on. But it's at the point that it's just got dyno tuned right an hour ago or yeah, two hours ago. That. So yeah, I, I'm excited to take the drag racing this year. It looks like a yeah, drag car. Yeah. So you're going to go, so you're drifting and you're drag racing. That's the idea. And, and I want to come out to his first test and tune night. Okay? Yeah. And I want to race him in my prowler. Because I think, because I think that's the only chance I'll have he, of beating him in the prowler. Because he's not going to know. He I, has this thing where he has to beat me. And I have to beat to, him in the prowler. It, it's prowler related, and he just has to beat me. Like we drag raced his prowler versus my raptor, and he won't let me live that down because apparently. You won? Well, yeah, it's Prowler's a raptor. Very fast. It's slow. Okay. Like it, it's an off-road truck, six thousand pounds. It's like I, I know the only he's chance, got a, aluminum pizza. That's the, like the only chance I have of beating his his uh, his fox body with my prowler is on his very first run. Because I, I, so I, I want to be. I haven't driven it. in two years. Right. I don't know how to launch it. So you're, you're gonna lie. And then he won't let me live that <laughs> yeah, down yeah, yeah, forever. Yeah. That's his only thing. I'll beat him every other run, probably. Yeah. But that first one is gonna feel good. <sighs> Seems like it's worth it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'll be there. See, like, I don't even want to let him do this because he's he's not gonna stop bringing it up. <laughs> I know how he is. Well, I'll let you race me after. Well, well I know I'll you will, but I'll you're gonna car continue after telling. That. You'll have yeah, no exactly. chance to. Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. No, you guys have, no reduce. Do you guys have any aspiration to do like road racing stuff? Like I see you, uh, you're doing like a bunch of video game stuff. I I like the video game stuff, but the, 
it's just so expensive to do anything. Like the cheapest thing would be to do the Centra Cup, which was the Micro Cup, but or Chump Car, right? Yeah, but then uh, you have to have isn't a car Chump Car all cheating anyways and just like not getting caught? Yeah. It's like oh, buy a fun racing. <laughs> I, I know, but like especially in Chump Car, we have it. We're not like we. Our car is way underpowered, and that's our fun. Like okay, we built the Chump Car in 2010 and haven't done anything since. And the rule book has go- gone out the window five times over since then. And guys, like I, guy, I swear to God, I got passed by a guy in like a DTM car at Watkins Glen, like around the outside. <laughs> and uh, but that's our fun, like just going out there and just flogging this thing. We're like we're not going to put any money into it. We're going to see where we're going to finish. And like that race at Watkins Glen, yeah. 97 car field. Wow. We passed. We led most of the race. We passed 18 cars every lap. Because that that sounds like fun. That it does. Was damn f- fun. For me, yeah. the idea of spec racing is like what I'd really want to do, where everything's even. Because when we play online, it's mm. all the exact same. Uh, Mazda Miata touring roads there on Gran Turismo, and it's very even. And like we play with like dumb stuff with like draft, but I just like everything even. Like we went go karting. The only uneven thing is that like Jacob weighs more, so like yeah. yeah. On a but then yeah, it actually yeah, matters. It actually but matters. then <laughs> but then if we do qualifying in reverse grid, then yep. it's like a more even field. I just like even racing i'm 100 percent on the same page like 100 percent. that's why i love the the nascar series i've never come across a rule book like that's more strict and thicker so you're saying the micro micro cup micro it's like micro Nis- Nisa oh, yeah, yeah. Micros, but, them. but now it's central yeah but the, okay. the entrance there with the car is going to cost like fifty thousand dollars and then it's probably fifty thousand dollars to run everything and then like what well, am i going to drag my wife around and kid every weekend like it's not realistic for like how I was brought up, like I wasn't brought up in a race family yeah. and like neither were you. So like, no. And then like sponsors and stuff like that, like and I have no idea how that works. Like what, what is it? What is a door worth? What is a hood worth? Like, wow, well, you guys are already in the game, but like we have no context for our race car. Just fund it off YouTube. We could. Well, that's my drift car is like, yeah, like, kind yeah. of like in his, uh, his Fox body. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I just, yeah, it's easier to get sponsorship for YouTube than it is for the race car. So just get, right that and I think then don't the, have any race sponsor obligations it's the I time so. the time commitment yeah like i yeah. don't want even like having the drift things on weekends is like oh like how many weekends can i like go get away from my family and like do this because like i do want to be home and do stuff like if the drift days were like on tuesdays like yeah let's yeah, go like, we right. we also kind of not necessarily a hard and fast rule but we try and stick to it as hard as possible is like we try and take weekends off because we used to not take any weekends off yeah. for years but now it's like weekends you got families exactly yeah yeah so right. then, then it's racing. like then it's like drifting on a Saturday because that's the day, and then I want to go drag racing. I should probably go on Saturday. So then that eats up another day. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I, that's probably the way to do it. Yeah. How, how's your racing going? Because you didn't do we ovals last year. You did road courses only, or uh, la- well, last year they still. I think the season got pushed back from COVID. Right. Which is insane for any American listening that we're still getting pushed back here. But this year is going to be a real season. Uh, put together a deal to run the whole season. Nice. Like, want to chase the championship. Like, it's a totally different feel. Like, growing up go-kart racing, like, that was my whole summer. Like, I didn't think about anything else other than the championship and, like, how it would play out in September. And, like, it's different doing the whole championship than doing a one-off race. Right, okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay, finish third, good. Right. Whereas if, like, I finish third in a one-off race, it's like, didn't win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, going to run the whole thing, uh, chase the championship, try and win it uh, kind of the last summer probably before I have a kid and a family like you guys. So that's enjoy, like, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not uh, not saying that it's not no, better. No, it's just going to take better more time. in a totally different way. Yeah. Uh, uh, cool news. We're, ra- we're racing in Newfoundland. Oh. Is it Targa or whatever? No, no, or no. Like this... we're running an oval, the NASCAR. Oh, NASCAR. oh cool. <laughs> well, well, like they added a stop. No offense, awesome. we're we're Team Sam Fellows. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he, he's one of the guys we've been doing like online racing with yep. for the whole time, and like we went to one of his races at um. Oh, uh, the oh man, what's the Flamborough? Uh, Flamborough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we'll cheer yeah. for you too. We'll have uh, we'll have you a sign for, for each of people. you. Well, I we just we cheer, cheer for, for th- we cheer for three. Uh, you well, you guys and uh, DJ Kennington because he let us drive the car. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's okay. three. I was out at DJ's yesterday actually. We were nice. Chatting. Yeah. All right, so we have three we can fanboy over. That's good. Are you guys gonna come out to any races? I want to. It's oh, yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah. I want. I want to. I want to do the pace car with my prowler. 
or like our like safety car. I it's think gotta, that'd be fun. What does it have to be? Does it have it. to be a certain brand? I, I want to trick them into just being like, oh, it'll be good for you guys if you uh, coverage if you let me uh, come run around safety. Most port and <laughs> can we, can we, can we side car. by side in the Prowler and the, and yeah, the yeah, Fox yeah. body or the Raptor? I just I just want to see a bunch of NASCARs doing this behind the Prowler. I think they do. Like I think they let people. Like they have, they obviously have their official pace car, right? Yeah. And then they have like a parade car or something. I want to say like they do a new Corvette at most port every once in a while. But like, I think you could convince them to use the Prowler. Like, but I just want to do more go karting. Like we did karts at um, most port at most port last year or two years ago, and that was like really fun. But it's like hard to get everyone together again. Oh, like rent the whole track and do. A group? Yeah, we did it with like the whole group who was doing online racing through all of COVID, and then we all met up in real life and, and like race, and that was like a, a, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a good track too. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. We got in some accidents there. That was, that was pretty fun. It is what it is. Like card. some hard ones. <laughs> oh, I, I was good. I, I, I dodged the like... the hairpin and stuff. I dodged yeah. a couple good crashes. I was like, uh, digging the grass Same and here. cut the corner and everything. Yeah. There's uh, at Flambro where you guys were, Oval, there's like a, there's a race. I forget what it's called, but it's like any, any street car, bring it. And it's like a 500 lap race and it pays something like good to win. And a uh, guy on my pit crew did it a couple years ago. And uh, you weren't allowed a spotter. Like, so you, in oval racing, you have a guy on the headset and, you know, he's telling you clear outside, clear inside. But so he, he ran it and another guy from my pit crew was his spotter and he just had like a five hour phone call with him. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the phone. Oh, wow. If you're, not, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Yeah. 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 I, I'd like to do something like that, but I'm just like so green to motorsport that I, I just feel completely out of my element. And like, yeah, I just like... Yeah, like this, the, drifting is my thing that yeah. I want to get into, and I'd love to do door to door, but I just it's like the concept of like a pit crew is like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, who do I, I have to pay people? Where do I find that's like, hey, uh, Steve, do you want to come yeah. uh, change some tires for me this yeah, week? Jacob, Jacob's calling me, like, I really need you for this. Yeah, right. that's how most <laughs> racing is. Like, I guess up so. until like even the highest levels, like, and even back in the day, it was just like that. It was, huh. Hey man, I need you this weekend. <laughs> I might have a flat or that's cool. I'm going to need you to fuel the car. And that's like how it was like guys in the sixties running pretty serious shit. Right. It yeah. still was like well, guy's neighbor was the. Yeah. At Flamborough, like Sam got a flat tire cause he hit a car, or a car hit him or something. And I'm like, Oh no, his race is done. And then he, he like pulls into the pits and comes out like, like pretty quickly yeah. after I'm like, I'm like, I want I, I want to know who did that so quickly. <laughs> like how? Yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys follow F1? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Recently or since always? Draft to Survive, I've been following for, it for way before. I'm on the bandwagon. Yeah, no. it's good. I didn't know the story, so like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't understand who's who, and I don't know why to be attached to anyone. And then after watching Draft to Survive, I'm like, okay, here we go. It's legit, like that that Netflix effect. Oh Holy yeah. Holy cow. Well, there's now um, there's Miami. Yeah. There's uh, Texas, and there's now Vegas. Yes. Which is crazy. And yeah, because of Drive to Survive. Yep. And the new cars, like people can follow and like pass and like, like that's cool. Yeah, that was you, exciting. What are your thoughts on the new cars? Super exciting to watch. Like that, I'm, f- I'm, that first race is like, holy, this is a whole different level of racing again. Yeah. The only thing I'm bummed on is like in the fantasy on the app, like, uh, <sighs> you know, fantasy racing or whatever, you can okay. like pick your drivers. I'm like, I like picking Hamilton and stuff. And like now he's blowing it. You're betting on it? Well, yeah, well, we have a pool and everything, okay. but like, oh, yeah, there's money. a pool. Okay. Yeah. You yeah, assume yeah. like, I'm like, okay, every year I pick like, uh, the first year I picked Ferrari or the second year I picked for, for, for all Ferrari and then they blew it. I'm like, okay. And then next okay. year I'm like, yeah, they were blown. And, I'm, like, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to pick Aston Martin because uh racing point did so well. And then Aston Martin blew it. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm yeah. like, you know what? Give me Hamilton and like, and, <laughs> McCla- and McLaren <laughs> and now they're blown. So like, it's just, yeah, that's frustrating. I had like, uh, Mercedes and Hamilton and then I had like Red Bull yeah, and then safe bet. And then I had Red Bull for the first race of the season, and it cost me probably the entire pool for the rest of the year. No doubt. And then I switched to Ferrari right after that. So now I'm just matched with everybody else that had Ferrari in the first race. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. But it's, but it's, it's exciting. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun to watch. And like now that I know the stories behind everyone, like, mm-hmm. like I'm waiting for the NASCAR draft to survive. Like, let me know why I should cheer for someone. For sure. Bubba. They should. They should be doing. He did that. Uh, what? I think race. On Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Race. Yeah. Did you guys watch cool. that? I watched it. I watched a couple episodes. Yeah, but then, cool. It yeah. wasn't yeah. as good because no. it also only follows like one driver and there's no like, I don't know. It's just, it wasn't as exciting, but it was really interesting need, for me. I need scripted story. I need storylines. I need uh, well, for the, to make bad guys. Let, let's, let's get some more drama. That yeah. just felt more like sort of raw to me because 
it was it was really cool because he was like yelling at his pit crew because they screwed up a, a pit stop and he's like this cost me the race and they're like Bubba you can't say this kind of stuff he's like oh, I'm gonna fucking keep saying this shit yeah I was like that's cool like that nobody ever would have said that in F1 no no and most NASCAR guys like probably half the field is that outspoken yeah like it, that's Cowboy exactly it that. yeah yeah I'm like that's so sick yeah they should do a NASCAR one yeah. but there's so many more drivers in NASCAR yeah yeah they couldn't. I mean, maybe they just put it on everyone to like film a little, little bit of their own stuff at home. I don't know. They're all everyone's doing it these days, anyways, for social media. Right. Yeah. And it would just help with sponsorships and stuff for NASCAR, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Um. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you guys cheering for this year? F one. Like, yeah. Ooh. Mm, I I just want I, to I'm see upsets, curious. and I just like I like uh, uh, surprises. Okay. I don't have like a favorite. I don't think I'm now cheering for Ferrari because I need the points. But um, <laughs> no, no. Who who were you cheering for when you first started? Like you started Ricardo. watching. I, I really liked when yeah, you were young, like Schumacher stuff. Okay. But like I wasn't into it then. Okay. But like I would watch it every other like whatever Saturday yeah. or Sunday or whatever. But um, now I, I like Danny Rick. I yeah. li- I liked because of his attitude. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, up until last year, uh, Kimmy. Kimmy was my favorite. Yeah. I, I actually read his autobiography. It's fucking hilarious. Okay. Uh, just the stories that he had of like waking up wasted and like his manager having to find him before an interview in Ferrari and stuff. I'm like, this is He's amazing. So many good drunk interviews. Oh, incredible. And like when he signed his F1, uh, his, his Ferrari contract, he like he was on a boat partying and he's like, oh, you got the contract and he just threw his phone in the water. I'm like, this is amazing. That's great. Yeah. So... Kimmy was definitely my number one before that, but yeah, him and Danny Rick. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Before I let you guys go, first car you guys both owned? Uh, first one was a hand me down from my grandma, my Ford Escort. First one I bought with my own money was a Fox Body Mustang GT. Nice. I had a 83 Camaro that I bought for 500 bucks. It was an automatic V6, two barrel car. It was, it was really bad. Yeah. But it was 500 bucks. I painted it lime green and. I think that's where I started liking like American stuff and like rear wheel drive. And I'm like, I'm never going back. It's like, you actually don't have hundred horsepower. It's like, I'm never going back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Anything else? Anything you guys want to ask me? Anything that's new you want to announce? Uh, I don't know. What was your first car? Yeah. Good question. <laughs> uh, Cause you told us before, or maybe it was actually on, have we started the podcast yet? What today? Yeah. Uh, no, we're, let me hit record. <laughs> okay. Uh, you told us that uh, you were learning about <laughs> driving uh, from the passenger seat, right? Yeah. So, like, what was the first one that you got as yours? Did you buy it, or was it like? That's what I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember exactly how it went down. Like the first, the first car I bought was a. Uh, 06 Cobalt SS. Oh, sick. Oh, supercharged? Yeah. Cool. No. Okay. <laughs> the, SS, cool, though. the SS non supercharged. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. the appearance yeah. package. Four, four door or two door? It, didn't, it was the two door, but it didn't have the big. Because right. it was non supercharged, had yeah. the little, little wi- spoiler. That's funny. <laughs> That's what I had for a little bit in high school. Sold that, made a few bucks. Uh, had an eight, And then I had an 89 GMC 1500 pickup, like two, two wheel drive, yep. blue with the bench seat. The exhaust fell off and it was just like loud as shit and i could yeah. just i would it was bad we'd like just go driving fields at lunch yeah okay yeah, that makes sense. that type of thing i actually have a, another question so obviously you guys uh sell cars here yeah um <laughs> shameless plug for your brand um what was the first transaction that you ever kind of were part of or like something that like got you excited about working for this company that you know, yeah, like I, w- I wasn't into cars, like not, I was into cars obviously, but I wasn't like excited about cars until I was like, f- I guess 15 or 16. I was like, uh, it was imminent that I was going to drive. Yeah. Uh, then the first car I bought and sold and my dad was so good. Like he, like he would, you know, have us work in the summer along with our part-time job or whatever and like help us along to like buy and sell a car. I'd be like, hey, look at this, look at this, you know. And then he'd make us just like call guys like as a 15-year-old talking to men down in the States and just like trial and error. It's like, wow. You know, and it was like, I remember just being so nervous. Like, yeah, just, I like, bet. Going to call this guy and be like, no, your car is only worth 20 grand. I know you want $37,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So you're, you're like a 15-year-old yeah. calling people yeah. lowballing them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. How was your voice? Was it, uh, oh, it was, hello? Yeah, it was probably like <laughs> that. Here, buddy. Yeah. Uh, so the, fir- the first deal I got done was uh, an 06, was it like a uh, just a Mustang GT convertible? 
Okay. It was a yellow car. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Bought and sold it before I got my G1. Nice. Yeah. So did you make? Did you make? I money? made a couple hundred bucks or nice. something. And then, like from then, just bought and sold cars in the summer, like every summer. Um, Where did you typically source the cars that you were buying? Just AutoTrader.com. Like okay. I'd buy and sell like Corvettes, like Z06 Corvettes. I yeah. started getting like kind of niche into those. Okay. I'd be like, know what the, you know, 2LZ package was, the 3LZ package, all that stuff. And I was pretty dialed in on the market. Yeah. It was like 06, 07, 08 when they had like, they had a Ron Fellows edition. They had the Will Cooksey edition. They had the CSR or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I just hammer everyone on autotrader.com and b- buy one. Yeah. Yeah. What's the weirdest description, uh, like one of one or one of this, like that you've seen on a Corvette ad? Is Every it like, Corvette is one of one. Never seen, never <laughs> seen the <laughs> only Corvette in yellow sold on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Probably like, <laughs> it's just. Never seen probably, sun. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I've, I've bought a car that <laughs> never seen Oh sun. my God. <laughs> never seen rain and never seen wind. <laughs> never seen didn't wind. See wind. Wow. Which is impressive when you have to drive it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. And, uh, and when are you going to start buying cool Japanese cars? Uh, yeah. I don't can, can you let us boat on that? <laughs> let us let us pick some for you. Just like really expensive ones that'll like make a splash. I like Just, those uh, Castrol lettered up Supras. Ah, uh, yeah. What about the uh, the Toyota Celica, like the GT? What is it? GT four. The the four headlight like Castrol. That's ones. a Celica. Yeah, one. yeah. That's Cel- I think. Celica oh the Supra. Celica Supra. Okay, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Okay, those yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think they look good, and yeah. it's mostly the Castrol livery. Which yeah, looks fair sick. enough. Yeah, what we about saw, we saw that at the museum in Germany? Yeah, that was sick. Oh yeah. What, yeah. what if you spent a hundred thousand dollars on a stock automatic Supra? Mm. How cool would that? I don't be? think I would. Yeah, right hand drive. <laughs> that's probably automatic. what they go for. It's insane. Yeah, we've got we've got so many of those ones where it was like, yeah that's going to take off like uh, early nineties M threes. They're what, 10, 10, 15 grand U S or whatever. And yeah. Like, damn. Yeah. Missed the boat on those. And the funny, cause you could have bought like the SMG ones that nobody wanted and then just did a manual conversion with factory parts and it's worth like double. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you got to start like moving on to like different stuff. I see you got some like Hellcats, demons and stuff like that. What's new? You got Mercedes. Yeah. You have that black series, right? Yeah. What's, I mean, that just happens cool? like with trade-ins and stuff. Is what's there, new and cool. Yeah. That like you're chasing. Or you guess say you're not yeah not, telling not me chasing <laughs> <laughs> something uh, that you can talk about. No, no, I think uh, like and frankly, like I'm not doing all that much buying. It's mostly my brother and stuff. Like who's really like kind of I don't know being the compass, like where where we're gonna look. I like that late '90s, early 2000s, like supercar stuff. I think that's those are good cars. Yeah, like yeah, for the future. Yeah, okay. Like that MC12 we just sold. Like, I think that's a... Okay, like supercars. I was thinking like Countach, Diablo. That stuff too. Yeah, Like, okay. I, th- I think like guys your age and my age and older, that was on the wall when they were a kid. Yeah. What about like you buying the 10 stock 370Zs, Nismos or something? Like something that's like 2013, that's like probably like the lowest it's going to be for a while. Is that does that make sense to you, or is that kind of like not even worth the storage? I had one in high school, bought and sold it. But if you had a bunch cool. of like stock ones, no. would you? Would you? Is there anything <laughs> it doesn't that makes sense to me? There's too many. Too it. It's all production numbers. Oh, okay. In my mind. So you don't care. Like there was about, a lot of them built. Like a Corvette doesn't matter, but as ZR ones that are one that you have downstairs matters, matters. more. But yeah. like if you bought a bunch of 240SXs back in the day, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you know, they made a lot of those. But yeah. I guess you got to you got to target stuff that's turning it into like drift missiles. That you got to be see, destroyed. Production about numbers, space too. You can't just, right, you can't just warehouse a hundred cars. But okay, so 240SX high production numbers, but how many of them have been put into walls and are written off now? So now they're very low. Oh, numbers. Yeah, let, yeah. let us let us start target. Let us buy ten cars for you. Okay. Give us a budget, and then in five years, we'll do this again, and we'll see how much money we, we gained or lost for you. Sounds good. We'll split the upside or the downside. You yes. can just keep it all. We, we, just be, we just want to spend someone else's money on cars. <laughs> <laughs> all right, deal. Yeah, that'll be tell, uh, tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, YouTube.com slash The Straight Pipes. That's cool. probably the best place. Yeah, yeah. Instagram. And Instagram, The Straight Pipes. Yeah. Don't right. follow our personal accounts. Yeah, no. That's not why you're here, guys. <laughs> no I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, thanks for taking the time. 
Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. us. Yeah, good times. Didn't feel like we were on a podcast. This is just talking. Well, I forgot to it's hit great. record. Oh, okay, that's why I felt like that. Yeah, what's that red car out in the showroom? The small one, the short I'll, one? I'll tell you later. Okay. All right, well, yeah, cool. Well, a couple weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Yuri and Jacob from The Straight Pipes. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share it with some friends. The podcast has really grown mostly through word of mouth. I really appreciate you guys listening and be sure to check out the Straight Pipes YouTube channel for two car reviews every week. See you guys next week.